Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me as always, I spy him way over there at the far side of this table, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Ahoy there. Ahoy! Yeah. It's great to be here. It's good to be nautical-themed, isn't it? Oh, de- yeah, is that what we're going with this week? <laughs> yeah, Mason, that's right, a thing. We... We're on a boat. And oh, whatever. you're already tired of the premise. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. You're tired yeah. of the premise you oh, invented. Oh, look, it's pirates or whatever. Oh no, we're going to steer this content ship into an iceberg. That's that's a, the new DC thing that happened, or you know, etc. Pirates generally steer their ship into icebergs. No, no, we're avoiding they have the to pirates. So we're we're, oh. we're there's pirates. Are we, we also pirates? No, no, we're regular. We're content ship. We're a content ship. <laughs> we're, okay, we're carrying let, me, content. let me map this out. We're a content ship. Yep, and we're we're carrying content and spices to the new world, perhaps. Yep. Okay, great. No, from the new world, because the new world is Hollywood. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're taking and it back to the masses. We're taking it back to the masses, the grubby masses back in, <laughs> back in the mainland. But we have to avoid content pirates? Yeah, sure. Oh, like pirates. Yeah, sure. But yep. sh- surely we could just give them the, the content and we would... Still, they would, we would both. No, there's have a the finite, finite amount of content. It's in this in this scenario because it's. I guess it's a metaphor. Okay. Or it's a real thing that we're pretending yeah, we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's a physical thing that we want to avoid giving okay, other people. Right. Yeah. Now, would you suggest perhaps that, <laughs> despite this very elaborate setup, yeah, this this podcast will be exactly the same as all our other podcasts. I mean, it remains to be seen. I certainly mm. hope that it's smooth sailing all around, Mason. Very nice. Yeah. But great. it remains to be seen. Okay. Now, Mason, it's a big week for content, obviously. Give me a gold. <laughs> oh, no. I've got a cutlass. So you're a pirate And too? a pistol. Oh, wow. And a peg leg and a parrot <laughs> and a big hat. It's too many. A lot of jewellery. You've got too many pirate things. I I've think got, you can... like, those raccoon eyes. <laughs> you got to pick two. You know what I mean? Mm, it's like the right. peg leg and the parrot and maybe a weapon, actually. I'll, I'll okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the peg leg because I think I want, like, it will be easier to, like. You want regular leg. I want a regular leg to, you know, climb up the side of a ship, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll keep the cutlass because that's cool. It is cool. And, you don't uh, have to reload it. You can just stab. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got a cornetto for after. Yeah, after you stab me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to eat the cornetto. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right, cool. Mason, this is the news of the week I'm excited. that we're going to be getting to. Rob Collings, who edits this, who he always puts in the time codes. God bless him, Mason. God bless him. Uh, Warner Brothers uh, are making a sequel to a surprising movie Very sequel. Surprising. We'll talk about that. Uh, delays but not dismays. Another Star Wars movie is in the bin, <laughs> seemingly. No, 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 Jabs. It's just being delayed oh, has for it? an indeterminate amount. <laughs> okay, of time. sure. There's a Karate Kid movie. Mm. Another one. There's already been four, but sure, there will yeah, be yeah. a. There's been five. There'll be a sixth Karate Kid there movie. Been five? There's been three original Karate Kid, yep. then Hillary Swank Karate Kid. the next Kid, Karate Kid. Which is set in the same Karate Kid universe. Mm. And then there was the Jaden Smith oh, Karate Kid. Oh, I forgot Kid. about that one. With, that is uh, Jackie a Chan reboot. Is also in that. Jackie yeah. Chan, yeah. That's so true. it's a different universe. Do you think it, maybe they're the same universe? Though? No, it couldn't be, be. Unless there's two Mr. Miyagi's who maybe there are. lost their wife. You think they're not two? I, statistically speaking, that's got to be true. There could be a second We're putting Miyagi. a call out, folks. If you're a Mr. Miyagi and your wife died, <laughs> email in. <laughs> And then Blade Runner is getting another sequel for some reason. But we're also using this opportunity, Mason, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the good ship content to go back and look at some things that we haven't quite talked about yet. Probably do like five to ten minutes on each, depending, I yeah, guess. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at the movies Nope. Uh, we're going to look at the movie Prey. We're going to look at the TV show The Sinned Man. Oh, yes. And then we're going to talk about Pinocchio. <sighs> yep. If We left that last because, like... <laughs> Our enthusiasm will run out, but I feel like the anger that we have will. Yeah, I watched Pinocchio and then I came into this room and I said, so we're talking about Pinocchio this week? And you went, what? And I'm like, you said we're going to watch Pinocchio. So I watched Pinocchio. I didn't watch all of Pinocchio. Wow, I watched all of Pinocchio. I even scrolled to the end to see if there was a post credit sequence in Pinocchio for some reason. Like a second wooden boy comes out. Yes. I'm evil Pinocchio. Oh, yep. I'm girl Pinocchio. I was made of the left- leftover bits of wood. Yeah, hey, I'm the rotten bits of wood. Look at me. Yeah, we'll get to it. I'm Pinopio. Pinopio. <laughs> hey. Very good, Mason. Uh, this is my deadline. I'm full of sap. Oh. I'm secreting sap from all my places. Why can't you eat sap? Me personally? Yeah, well, anybody. I think is there some there's some sap you can eat, like a maple syrup, for example. Sure, yeah. With a process. Well, I'm not made of maple syrup. I'm, I'm all made of yuck sap. The yuck sap. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Good. I've got old mosquitoes stuck in me. <laughs> Warner Brothers, this is via Deadline, have done something of late 
in this last week, which is not cancelling. No, 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 oh, no. They're not cancelling something. Okay. Did you also see the rumours this week that Dave, Victor Zaslav, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. he's just cutting a bunch of stuff so he could sell the company on again? Makes sense. So he's trying to make it like lean and, and as lean and like – Valuable as possible, and then getting rid of it. Great. This is, that's another bit of uh, that's a, <laughs> this. This hey, just so you know, this this is lean and mean, and it's got no debts, but also we're not making anything. <laughs> We've cancelled everything. So if you want, if you want, is he turning this into Atari, a company that isn't anything, but it's just the thing you can put on t-shirts sometimes? Maybe because I don't think uh, I don't think people want to wear just a t-shirt that says Warner Brothers on it. I, I don't think an, it's got the cachet of no. Atari and the Space Invaders. I saw an interesting thread this week that, and I don't have it in front of me, um, where the a person talks about how actually it was in relation to an article. I can't remember. Anyway, I saw read something on the internet, Mason. Love it. Where they're basically going back to their old to an old school method of distribution, where their properties they're like they're hand they're giving away rights and distributions to. To, to rather companies to use, okay. which is like the older model that companies would do. And Disney even used to do it more where they would give their properties over to like Netflix, for example. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. So, you know, that's how we got the Marvel Netflix shows and, uh-huh. and all of that. But then Bob Iger realized that basically you're, you're giving everybody all your best IP yeah. and allowing them to grow a platform. That's right. So they, I think the article – yeah, likened it to you giving your enemy like the nuclear nuclear weapons essentially sure. to destroy you. Yeah. So that so uh, basically related to what's happening at Warner Brothers, whether that's what they're doing. Anyways, aside from all that, uh, Warner Brothers are moving forward. It seems with a Constantine sequel yeah. to the 2005 Keanu Reeves movie, or should we say Constantine? Uh, I yes. say no. Yeah, I, I like say th- I'm I'm saying this version is called Constantine because American. Yes, he's a, he's a goddamn Yank. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Isn't this fascinating? Yeah. It is. Now, we recently talked about this on Caravan of Garbage. We it's true, revisited. it is. It's pretty good. I and agree, also, yeah. it's like, it's Keanu Reeves, who is mm-hmm. big and hot and happening right That's now. That's right, yes. He was recently in League of Super Pets. I think he was sure. Batman or something. I That's don't know. That's great. Or maybe Batman's car. <laughs> That's a different show about okay. Batman's car. All right. Who plays Batman's car in that? I don't know. Maybe Will Arnett? Batman. No, you're thinking of Knight Rider. Yeah, yeah, Man's yeah. Man's car voice. The last recordings of Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> My goodness. I don't I'll find it later. Anyways, I, it's somebody. It's somebody famous. I can't remember who it is. Anyways, Francis Lawrence is again returning to direct. In between then and now, he I think he did I Am Legend. He also did all the Hunger Games movies. Yeah, and, and Mr. Keanu Reeves is returning. Right? That's right. And uh, Akiva Goldsman, who, of course, is known for Weed Road Production. That's right. A studio which we stumble on every now and then. Which sometimes produces a hidden gem, such as The Losers, but yep. other times produces a hidden um, phlegm. A hidden phlegm, very good, <laughs> uh, such as uh, Jonah Hex. Yes, that's right. J.J. Uh, J. Abrams is also producing along with Hannah Minghella. Mm-hmm. So it seems as if that this is actually happening for now at least. Did, did it say something along the lines that Keanu Reeves is co-writing that? I didn't see that, but I'd okay. be open for that. Well, he's yeah. recently been doing Berserker and that's Berserker-related right, yeah. content, uh-huh. so yeah. that, that would not surprise me. Yeah, and again, you know, th- this this perhaps leans into – one of DC or Warner Brothers strategies of let this, you know, not be a connected universe. We can do. But it know, could also be connected. It could also be connected to, yeah. to the wider DC EU or it could be, you know, we, we can have we can have a Constantine in the mm. Sandman universe. We can have a Constantine in the what it, what remains of the CW Arrowverse. Yeah. We can have a Constantine in, in this series because it was good. Do you think we will have a uh, – do you think they'll bring back Rachel Weiss and she'll reveal she has a, a second identical sibling? Oh, my God. Who also gets into a, a bit of trouble. A third twin? A third twin. John, it's my, it's my third twin. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to question that. This one dead? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a murder mystery again, John. She's lost in a house of mirrors. <laughs> you know how tricky those are to get out of. <laughs> Is it magical? No, it's It's regular. Mm. But, you know, you get turned around. It's true you do, yeah. <laughs> I, I, here's a question for you, though, Mason. Go on. It's more of a statement. Oh, how, here we how, go. How are you? Are you one? Oh, gr- that's, no, that is a question. <laughs> no, no, I'm not really asking. It's like uh, when you okay. see someone, you're like, hey, how are you going? I'm not really interested. Are you asking me so that you can say how you are? <laughs> yes. Because I refuse to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is actually a question. If there was no Constantine movie mm-hmm. with Keanu Reeves yes. and it wasn't something that we recognised, okay. how do you think this would be received? By the general public? Yeah. Uh, do you mean uh, is does, is the general public aware of other Constantine properties? Like, do they know? The, yeah, the sure. TV I mean, there would have been a CW and whatever. I guess I don't know. Now I reckon people would be like, I like the idea because it's Keanu. Yes, mm. I also agree, but I think there'd still be some pushback. Oh but, yeah, definitely. Mm. 
we've talked about this before and like you know and, and there's been I'm not going to get into it but there's been a lot of discourse about how a character might change being adapted for the screen this week. Mm. Just a big sook, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, yeah, going yeah. on and whatever. Hey, since we're talking about Warner Brothers in DC, mm. I've got one bit of news. Oh wow. That's right. Uh, this is from the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, but th- this is a this is a small element in a la- much larger article, but people can track this down. Warner Brothers Discovery has bigger problems than its DC search. Ooh. And it's about, uh, you know, the studios hunting for their own Kevin Feige. Yeah. Uh, they're heavily indebted, et cetera, et cetera, and it's all about... <laughs> That's just regular company stuff. Well, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my favourite part of this article, this is something I learned uh, this week. I didn't. I don't know if you know this, but um, it's possible that... There are, there are two people, a Mr. DeLuca and a Pam Abdi, who are currently the acting heads of the division, the DC superhero division. Okay. They might end up running the DC EU sort of by default. They might just become the Kevin Feige's because they're just there and it's easier than hiring some new person. No, that makes sense. But here's the thing. Internally, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, DeLuca, I don't have a first name here. Uh, DeLuca uh, was a comic book collector as a kid and years ago at New Line he made Blade and even had an Iron Man movie in development. A source says Bob Shea, the new line chief at the time, let the option for Iron Man lapse, arguing that it didn't make sense because Iron Man was too heavy to fly. <laughs> yeah, like a plane. Yeah, like a Planes plane. Planes are too heavy to yeah, fly. Like a hummingbird or whatever it is. <laughs> a bumblebee. They, they don't, doesn't make it. What, what, what is it that doesn't make sense that it flies if you don't know anything about physics? A bee. I don't think it's true, but a yeah, bee. It's not that's true, yeah. the, the rumour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But that's, that's interesting. I didn't know so, Iron Man was optioned at New Line. And, yeah, no. I think we talked about it when we did the Caravan of yeah, Garbages. Right. That was like early to mid 2000s Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I guess they, they got it in a package with Blade. But I think that's fascinating that they – there's got to be somebody over at New Line. Or they're probably retired now. Yeah. It's absolutely kicking themselves that they went. I like, don't think New Line could have done it well. No, they wouldn't have done it well. <laughs> they wouldn't have done that, the, the version yeah. that we got. They would have done it – I don't know. I can't even think he would have had this. He would have had the um, – the roller skates. He would have had the rocket roller I'm skates. I'm okay with that. He would have had yeah, because they're like, he can't fly. He yeah. will roller skate. He'll have a rocket pack and roller skates. Yeah, I love it. Mm, that's very interesting. Anyway, it's, well, it sounds like if they go with these people, then they've they've clearly got some insight yeah. into, into what yeah, works, yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That was one bit of news. Now, did you have a one bit of news last week? Yeah. I feel it's hotly contested. By, by me, who? By me right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, if I if he doesn't bring in three uh, one bits of news, if he doesn't do it three times, mm-hmm. then I get another veto. That's true. This is too complicated. Why Isn't am it I, though? Yeah, <laughs> which means I can stop. You can veto any part of you can you can veto you can veto any upcoming fun you choose. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You can drag this podcast any riff, down whatever. into misery if yeah. you if you so choose. I get three at the start of every year, and I use them very quickly. Mm. And now I, I don't have anything. That's, that's why right. the boat thing happened up top. You started the boat thing. Yeah, but I couldn't stop it. That's could I? true. <laughs> Delays but not dismays, Mason. Oh, yes. You're going to hate this. Uh, there was an untitled Marvel film set to release on February 16th, 2020, but it's been... Um, 2020? 2024, Mason. Okay. Get, get with it. Uh, and it's that's been shipped to September of 2024. Whoa. Yeah. What do you think of that? Whoa. What do you think it is? Don't know. Yeah. It could be nothing. I mean, it could be... It could be, some, be something. Well, it could be something they're trialling in one of these holiday specials or, you know... And if if whatever character it is tests well, they put it on the slate That's for them. That's a good point. Yeah, it might be a Bloodstone. Yeah, it might be an Adam Warlock or something Marvel like that. Marvel can do a movie in two years. Yeah, you know, pretty competently. Mm. Uh, also, oh, you're not going to like this, Mason. Uh-oh. Craven the Hunter was set for January of next year, okay. but it's been moved to October of next year. That's such a long time. Mm. A year, Mason. Mm. Uh, knocking out Madam Web. Maybe they want another run at Morbius. Just yeah. To- Second to Morbius. Uh, Madam Webb then moves from that October date to February of 2024, okay. which was also when that um, Marvel movie was going to come out, which now isn't. Mm. This is time is a flat circle, et cetera. That's right. Uh, do you think, how do you think that, uh, let me ask you a question. It's more of a statement, Mason. <laughs> First of all, how are you doing? I'm great, by the way. Yeah, I knew it. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but do you think this bodes well for Craven? Does this mean anything? No, Pushing I don't think back it, no, Madam think, Webb? No, 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 no. You don't think it there? I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's filming now though, right? I think Craven's done. I think Madam Webb might still be filming, but that would be close to finishing if it's I mean, not. Maybe they want to maybe they want to ease it into Oscar season, you know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. You know? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe they, maybe they want to. Maybe they want to jump off the bullet train. You know, home media release. Into, okay, sure. You know, Oscar season. You see or that something. yet? No, no, me neither. Yeah. Oh well, it'll always come to streaming. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. 
Hey, Mason, you know how we're stuck in a never-ending time loop? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. So I've got a never-ending stream of dipshits crying about woke, woke culture. Wait, wait, wait. So, 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 so just before you go into that, where yeah. the, the ship we're on is in a time loop. Yeah, also. sure. It's okay, in a great. Big, it's a portal. Okay, so it's like the um, it's like the Bermuda Triangle, but it's a loop. It's oh, like a loop de loop Nice. <laughs> terrific. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, yeah, people crying about everything's too woke or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We got. I think we got We At some point... We, we, you and I personally, I think are at a breaking point of we don't want to talk about no, this sort of stuff anymore. No. I think our position is clear on this yeah. sort of stuff. We hate it. Yeah. We love it. We, we don't want to. <laughs> just Let's clarify. We'll talk about this. We'll clarify. Sure. We'll never talk about it again. Uh, the, so that's the first thing. A big company buys another big company. It's mm-hmm. always sure. another bit of news. And Star, a Star Wars movie is quietly killed. Yep. And this week, Mason, <laughs> uh, Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron movie has been removed from its December 2023 release date. Oh. That's That couldn't have happened regardless. Like, mm. That hasn't started or been cast or anything. We would yeah, have been yeah. hearing about that. Yeah. Uh, so th- there's we, as of this moment, the, Kevin Feige might be producing one. At one. Mm. Taika Waititi is apparently still doing one. Though yes. off the back of Thor, mm. last Thor. I don't know about that. Ryan Johnson, Johnson is still working on his trilogy, yes. Which um, maybe I'm hoping this is true. Maybe they're waiting to get a bit of distance from The Last Jedi so they can bring him back to mm. do it. Because I would love him to do – Yeah. We've talked about this. So he apparently is – this is a, a previous rumour. They couldn't agree on a script. Um, and also I, I'd imagine after Top Gun Maverick came out. Yeah, that's went, what I was thinking. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Like it's just – that's not what this you, will you be. You can't give us – you can't give us what what is – what apparently at the time was going to be the ultimate kind of – Dogfighting, the best fighter pilot movie fighter of all pilot, time. Yeah, best fighter pilot movie of all time. When we've just gotten the best fighter pilot movie of all time, yeah. And also, much of that was real. And yeah, how are you? What are you gonna? What are you gonna put some engines in an X wing and? Yeah, maybe drop it out of a plane. I mean, potentially, sure. Yeah. But I, I think also, even if they did that, that added sense of realism that Top Gun has because it's like it's real, it's the real world and whatever. Mm. You you won't get that sense because it, it's Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I am going to talk about Andor a bit later. I, I saw a few of the if episodes early, which I'll uh, maybe I'll talk about in what we're reading. Uh, anyways, do we want to talk about our position in this thing so we can stop talking about it for the rest of our lives or whatever? Do you have a piece of news attached to that? Or no, just that it's no. It's just those are the three things that are. Oh, happening. okay, right, right. Now we'll do it next time. Something. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> next week then. Yeah, yeah, next or week. Or even by the end of this episode. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, Disney are clearly just capitalizing on old IP. Yes. And, like, that's part of it. And then people get upset. I mean, In this it, week, for example, Italians. <laughs> we'll get it. Yeah, I do want to talk about that. But it's also, like, why do you care what color the Little Mermaid is? What, mm-hmm. why, why, would, why would that upset Because it's it? actually science, Jones. Yes, I know, Mason. Because all the – something about – something – you can't have black people underwater or no. whatever. Because all fish are stark white, as you know. <laughs> yes. Every single fish in the universe <laughs> – it's all white. We've been we've been fishing for them on this ship. That's very true. And they're all white they're all fish. All white. Yeah, exactly. Is that video of the blue lobster the other day? Yeah. What color do you think they turn when you cook them? It'd be blue, wouldn't it? Same same color. Maybe. You know, I'll tell you what though, Mason. I'm Go not on. interested in a blue lobster. You could paint a lobster. Like that's not <laughs> interesting to me. Which is with a house paint? Yeah, yeah. You just dip it in a bucket. It's fine. Uh-huh. It's all fine. But like you know. Yeah. Uh, Mason Go Sony on. apparently are moving ahead with a Karate Kid sequel movie. Whoa. In 2024, nothing else is known. Apparently it's going to be more in line with like original Karate Kid, which is probably a good idea because I don't know if you've been watching that show, but it's uh, it's certainly stepped up a notch in terms of how many people are kicking each other. It's okay, so you think this will be 200 a- people kicking each other every episode now. The, the phrasing of the announcement, I don't know if you have it there, no. but it, but it, um, the, the, the piece of news suggested – it was the it was the new continuation of the Karate Kid movies or something like that. It was, oh, here it is. A new this is from Discussing Film. A new Karate mm-hmm. Kid film described as the return of the original Karate Kid franchise will release on June 7, 2024. So that would suggest that seems to suggest that Cobra Kai is not in continuity. No, I think it is. I think like Cobra Kai, or at least it started as what if the bad guy, you know, what's his story? And yeah, right, Karate right. Kid. But I guess this new one would be more Let's just do the Karate Kid again. Yeah, so does Daniel. Even though Cobra Kai also does the Karate Kid right. again. So does Daniel in the Cobra Kai series, does he have his own yeah, he's Karate got his Kid? Own dojo. Yeah, he's but got Yeah, he's got. Does he have a Karate Kid? He's got kid? a couple of Karate Kids. Do you think any of the, because I haven't watched it. Yeah. Uh, well, I, some of it. But do, would you suggest that any of the Karate Kids on this show have the star power to be the lead in a new Karate yeah, Kid Yeah, potentially. Movie? One of the people in the Karate Kid is the new Blue Beetle. Oh. So, you know. But yeah. I think maybe, I don't know. I think it'll be. 
I think they'll, they'll they're going to make it standalone, whatever that looks like. Even though it's a very popular show, they're going mm-hmm. to it's Sony, so they're going to make the broadest thing imaginable yes. <laughs> to get people in. Maybe they get Tom Holland as the Karate Kid. Whoa! Don't you think he'd be a good Karate Kid? Yeah, and they do seem to be hot because he was a good everything. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Let's fan cast him for everything. Yeah, we're, I mean, we've sort of reached that point where, we're, like, back in the '30s, where where movie stars were sort of. They got paid a uh, like a, a weekly wage, and then they were just in every movie that their studio put out. Yeah. It seems like that's happening now. Like Netflix have yeah. Henry Cavill and etc. And Sony have just got Tom Holland for yeah. They've just got Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. They got him. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, more Karate Kid. Uh, THR reporting, Mason. This is the last bit of news, mm. and uh, this speaks to my my theory that. There's always somebody with a lot of money who wants more Blade Runner. Yeah, because mm. they never do well. It's mis- it's mis- do you think it's the do you think it's the same financial backer that keeps the fast food franchise Red Rooster running? I think it absolutely is. I think it's probably the same. I think I think, I think it's this whoever, goes all the way to the top. Yeah, it's whoever, of Red Rooster. It's whoever, <laughs> the roof. Mm. It's whoever uh, <laughs> where they keep the chicken. Yeah. They keep the spare chicken in the unair conditioned roof cavities. <laughs> I think if there's um, it's probably the same of Tron. Somebody's. Somebody's love at Tron. I don't I think know. It, I don't know if it's the same guy. Yeah. But it's a guy who uh I don't know because I for mean, people I guess, who don't know, James, and this is sure. the most important part of this news, Red Rooster is a uh it's a fra- it's a franchise fast food restaurant. It's our favourite franchise, Mason. And uh nobody goes there, but it's been around for fifty years. Yeah, but there's always least. four cars in the drive thru. Yeah. Mm. But but again, but nobody eats there. <laughs> still around. Yep. It's owned by like <clears throat> The, the Maya group. So, I th- so yeah. it's a, some sort of tax write-off situation. There seems to be one every couple of suburbs. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. And you love going there, but you don't even like the food, really. <laughs> they changed the chicken, Mason. Yeah, they did. They yeah. changed it on me. Yeah. And I know that because one of the employees there recognised us and he messaged me privately and then I said, hey, while I got you here, <laughs> I need to know what they've done. And it's true. I wasn't. You, you, you tried to gaslight me. You were like, yeah. "It's the same," but I'm like, "It's not the same." Mm. Anyway, it is changed. Anyway, I should get that chicken out of the roof cavity. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's the that's the heritage chicken. That's the archival chicken chain. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, this the deranged billionaire that that keeps yeah. Red Rooster running also wants to keep the Blade Runner IP moving, despite the fact that the original was not a financial yes. success. Blade I mean, I think it was eventually. Yeah, yeah, it obviously did very well. Blu-ray, probably laser disc. It did super Blade, well. And then Blade because Ra- a nerd would yeah. have had a laser disc, yeah, and yeah, a nerd yeah, would yeah. have bought. Yeah, each, uh, each laser disc would have been ten thousand dollars. <laughs> and then Blade Runner twenty forty nine again did fine. No, let me look Holy? up the numbers. Yeah. yeah, okay. But but nevertheless, they are moving forward with Blade Runner twenty ninety nine. There's a there's an also an anime series. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was those shorts that they released. Yeah, in between those cargo shorts. Yeah, those. Uh, that's a five-year-old movie now, Blade Runner 2049. Sure is, yeah. That's nuts. Why is Wikipedia so my, – the font in Wikipedia for me is really big for some reason, but it's not. I'm not zoomed in. Have you tried Pinch and Zoom? I, have I tried Pinch and Zoom? Pinch and Zoom you, mate. Um, <laughs> You'll have to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> so the budget – I'm climbing up the rigging. You'll never get to me. I'm going in the crow's nest. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, – Played a veto, I'd get you out of that Christmas. I'd be able to pitch you, mate. Uh, the budget was between 150 and 185 million, so I would say probably on the higher end of that. And it yeah. made 259 million, so with marketing and whatever. And it did have a big marketing mm. push. Uh, so no, that wouldn't have been financially successful, at least in cinemas. It's probably broken even since. Yeah. Now, do we have any more information besides? Yes, I do, mate. It's, it's called Blade Runner twenty ninety nine. So it's set fifty years. Yes. Ago. Oh, I didn't mention this. It's an Amazon series, Ooh. and it's from Scott Free Productions, Ridley Scott's production. Yeah, company. right, right, right. And it is a limited series, so it's going to be set fifty years after the last, which is set. What was it? Thirty years after the previous one? I can't remember. Yeah, the the first one is set in twenty nineteen. I think. Yeah. Wow, incredible stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very excited that somebody, probably Bezos. Yeah. He, he seems like a like a nerd who would be into this. A horrible creep. And he's always got flavour wrap crumbs <laughs> on his face. Very suspicious, yeah. Mason. Have a seen... popular food item from Red Rooster Agreed. for the uninitiated. It's the only thing worth eating there. <laughs> uh, Mason, is is have you seen Jeff Bezos with his shirt off? No, although I, I He's don't. Doing some I human know almost, I, I know almost nothing about Jeff Bezos. I'd never even heard him talk. Strange until voice until right? he he came back from space and he he left space yeah. with a bald head and he returned from space with a cowboy hat on. And I'm like, did he get that? Did he get that cowboy hat from space? Yeah, he did. Wow. Yeah. 
Look at this dude. You think there's like hats up in low Earth orbit and you just <laughs> grab one? Yeah. You, you go out on that extension arm and you grab one. For a dude who's what, 50-ish at least? It looks pretty good. Yeah, that's human growth hormone at work, mate. <laughs> good on him. Fuck this guy. What's fucking wrong with him? Why would, you live, why would you be anything like that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I appreciate the Red Rooster. Mm. Blade Runner though, great. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Amazon clearly were happy to put a lot of money into something mm. which people don't like. So that's Let me fine. ask you this, James. Yeah. Who would you want to return? Nobody. Really? And who do you think could return? I'm everybody. Thinking, yeah, yeah, everybody could return. I, but I would love to, I would love if Deckard came back, if Harrison Ford came back as Deckard and he's not a replicant, he's just way older. <laughs> <laughs> he's just been another 50 years and he's even more haggard. Yeah. He's still got that grey yeah. T-shirt on. Well, they never specify. He's covered in red dust. He could also come back. Even if the last version of him was a replicant yeah. that we saw. He could be, he could be a replicant. Or he could be a replicant now. Yeah, mm, like they they make Oh, copies. they could glossy him up. They glossy him up. Do you think a do you think a Harrison Ford or a Ryan Reynolds not a Ryan Reynolds, a Ryan Gosling Ryan would Reynolds come. would do it. Ryan Reynolds would do it. Well, Ryan Reynolds was a well, Ryan Gosling was a was a replicant. Mm. But he he apparently maybe Ryan Reynolds doing the Voight Kamp test and he's like, he's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> or like he's doing the Voight Kamp test and then he kills the he kills the, the tester and he's like, well, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers in the cinema. In the they're cinema. filming, they're, 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 they're playing it in a cinema. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Gosling's a replicate, so yeah. he could come back or mm. there's another version. Well, we know Dave Batista was also a replicate. That was the first well. person I thought of. I'm like, could you yeah. do, does, does he, he do want it. to do TV? Does he want do, yeah, I he, think so. Would he want a role? Cause, uh, you if know. it's limited, especially. Yeah, spoiler alert for that character who got a small role in, he's a, he has a small role in 2049 and he has a, a slightly expanded role in that, in, uh, in the pre, is yeah. a, which must be on the Blu-ray, but it's the the, the sort of a web short about yeah. his involvement in kind of a replicant war yeah. kind of thing, yeah. There was also, and, and because we're in spoilers, uh, Deckard's daughter. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's also, um, I mean, they could bring back Rachel as well as they did in the previous yeah. one. Jared Leto. Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's, do, he's, he's actually doing Tron 3 apparently. <sighs> I know. Do the thing they were supposed to do in the la- end of the last right. one. She escaped with the Tron, she Olivia Wilde or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got out of this Tron for nothing. Yeah, right? Yeah. There is a Tron thing coming up. I think it's like a mobile game or something. It's called Tron Identity. It's called Tron $3 a minute. <laughs> That's right. Tron uh, transactions are automatically deducted from your Apple wallet. Very nice. Yeah. It makes you think, doesn't it? It really does. It's on Steam. It's a visual novel adventure. And it's set hundreds of years after the previous I've, Tron I've game. never tried one, but it just doesn't seem like it's my thing. A visual novel. Yeah. Yeah, right. A book, if you will. But I'm sure it's a... Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I it's, like comics. It's, so. a, it's a fine line. Like, I've played a couple. Like, I think I mentioned Kentucky Route when, Zero, which is when like When you say a, play, what does that mean? Though? Well, I mean, because that's the thing. It's a fine line between just watching a movie. Sorry, that was more of a statement. I it have was, something yeah, to say. That's, <laughs> that's right. No, go on. The, the, like, it's a, it's a fine line between... You know, just watching this story, you know, this this intriguing story, but it doesn't have a lot of kind of challenging game elements to it. So it's really you just go to a place okay. and you speak to some people and they give you some information. You go to another place and they tell you more information. And what happens if you don't get all the information? You just wander around. And then that's it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it'll be more like a Telltale game. Yeah, cool. All right. Great, great, great. Mm. Wow, Mason. Who would ever thought? That just happened. Um, mm. Mason, we're going to talk about four things. Oh. All right. All right. Uh, do you want to start with Nope? Yes. Knowing that we we are. We talked about it before. Nope. <laughs> by that I mean I do you want do. to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, do we want to do spoilers? These are all out. Should we do spoilers? I think we should do should non-spoilers. We do a general non I think we can do non-spoilers. I think we should do non-spoilers for Nope. Okay. I, think, I don't think we need to cover spoilers for Prey because it's been out for a trillion years. It's on and also, well, so it's, nice, a, it's a Predator movie. Yeah. So. Have you seen any of the Predator movies? It goes about that way. It goes about that way, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, we can talk about the thing we talked about, about the woke thing. Oh, because yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would have to happen within the next two or three minutes. Yeah. I, so let, let's let's start with Nope. James, it's also in this because KK Palmer's in this. That's and, true, and yeah. There's been some KK the, Palmer The rogue news. stuff this week. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, Incredible choice, and yes, yes but well, you know. what I I work backwards because as soon as you are, as soon as you open up Twitter in the Southern Hemisphere, yeah, 
there's already memes and wh- whatever whatever thing has happened overnight. Yes. There's already memes and, and, you either and get concept the art or what have you and yeah. jokes and whatever and then you have to sort of work backwards to figure out what happened while you were asleep. Yeah. And, and like a like a uh, like a visual novel, like a visual novel, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And for mm. us, it was yeah. But KK Palmer's some somebody suggested she would be a good rogue, mm. and then she tweeted that she would she would get. Where's my agent? Let's get this happening. Yeah. And then of course people made fan art, and people were mad about it. And yeah, and so on and so forth. So because I saw, I think it might have been the original video where it was like you know the obvious choice of being like, well, she could be Storm or whatever, but that. No, mm. like that, that's not a good choice at all. Like that, yeah. like if you took her personality and put yeah. it for Storm, that's, that's boring and not making use of yeah, right, her right. abilities, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, anyway. anyway, we'll talk more about that later, I think. Sure. Yeah. So this is Jordan Peele's third yes. directorial so, As efforts. mentioned, yes. sorry, sorry, $68 million. It made 166 at the box office. It's now on streaming. It's making more. It's the lowest of what he's made uh, so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, it's been pretty well received, though. So Get Out was only made for $4.5 million and made $255 million. Uh-huh. Us was made for $20 million and made $255 million. Uh, What do you think the story was? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so Daniel Kaluuya yep. and KK Palmer, they're, to their, they're, they're two siblings and they, they, live, they live out in what I'm going to assume is Texas. Rural area. It's, well, it's got to be rural Los Angeles, right? Because they do Hollywood stuff. Oh, yeah, they stuff. do Hollywood stuff. Because um, they, they, they run a, a, a horse farm yeah. and, and they're following in the family business. Their father sort of uh, trained horses to do Hollywood stuff. Yes. Uh, but that, that industry is drying up because everybody's moving to CGI horses, obviously. Mm. We'll be moving to CGI horses before too long, I think. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the horses we're on now are real, <laughs> but they aren't living forever. You know no, what I mean? Absolutely not. Yeah, you know? we'll have to shoot them eventually. <laughs> we won't have to, but we we will we shoot will them we'll shoot them eventually. <laughs> uh, but they're uh, they're they're you know they're out there. They're trying to. Their, their father died in a in a in a some sort freak. of. Some sort of storm, fr- yeah, sort of a, a freak, uh, a freak uh, objects falling from the sky yeah. storm, uh, and 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 they're trying to keep the business afloat. But you know, the, the people want them to, you know, they're they're tempted to sell the the property and etc. Uh, but also, there's some freaky stuff happening out there. What is it? Oh, well, I shan't be saying. They're not in not in non spoiler territory, it's James. I, no, this didn't come out here. This was delayed like a month. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I luckily avoided all the spoilers for this, which I really. Which was great because going in, I'm like, oh, if I'd have known this, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have enjoyed this as much as I did. I thought this was wonderful. I had a very good time. Yeah, I, this, yeah. I enjoyed this a lot too. But yeah, it's 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 very. And I didn't love us either. We talked about it. I think it's the concept. I'm like, I cannot get behind the this. movie. Us. Yes. Mm. You love us. Ah, you the, know, you we, know the, we we know each other. Podcast pairing. We know oh, each wow, other. Wow! 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 <laughs> and our horses wow. seem to get along. That's true for now. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, I, I just think I couldn't get behind that concept. I know also, like, the idea behind us, it's a, it's a metaphor. If you look at mm. it literally, it doesn't make sense. And I guess this, in the same way, this also doesn't make sense when you look at it literally, I guess, a lot of it. But I think I, I just thought I think the concept tied to what it meant b- behind it, like the messaging, I think, t- yeah. meshed really well it's together. It's interesting. I I wonder how much I'm, – I'm, I'm sure, you know uh, – you know, I'm sure there's there's many many deliberate themes inserted into it, but I I wonder, you know, I I think this this movie has a, sort of a lot of great visuals and a lot of kind of interesting sort of scenes and vignettes, and I think you sort of you can build your own meaning out of this movie yeah, kind of totally. thing. I'm like, well, like going out of this, I'm like, okay, this is a movie about old Hollywood, old meets Hollywood, new Hollywood, old Ho- Hollywood meets new Hollywood, and how like the Hollywood system kind of chews everybody up, and as soon as yeah, you, as soon as your usefulness is 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 uh, is. As soon as your skills are no longer acquired, you're yep. out the door. And what does that? It's do? also getting like yeah. a foot in the door. And, and, and what does social that? Media and what does that do to you? Yeah. And what do you? Or what are you willing to do to get? What are you willing to do to yeah. get? And 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 what what is your public? What is your public reaction to that yeah. kind of thing? Because we have a character in we have a character in this uh, who was a sort of a a child actor on a TV series, and something horrendous happens on mm. it, and and which you think is unrelated, and it and it kind of is. Mm. But metaphorically, it isn't, and also literally, in yeah, some yeah, ways, it's yeah. not also. That's very... right. And but but when he when he retells the story of of the you know of his time on 
this show, it's nothing but wonderful memories. Yeah. But we see inside his mind as he he recounts this story. It's, oh, this thing was crazy, but it like it clearly destroyed him, which yeah. I think is really interesting. And I think it's also the, the way that he survived it is not for the reasons that he thinks, which mm. is ultimately his undoing. Yeah. Because he thinks he has an it, – it's a, a basic – you see it at the start, but basically a chimpanzee goes insane on a show and kills everybody except him. Mm. And he thinks it's because he has a connection with this thing. Yeah. But that's not the reason he – Survived, and he he brings that into his encounter with. Should we just do some spoilers then? Because uh, yeah, look, I think the visuals on this are great. Um, I think there's some really chilling. I think scenes like there's a moment in a barn, which is quite spooky. There's a hmm. spooky barn moment. Yeah, uh, and I think you know what what is interesting. I think as well, you know, the the movie is called Nope. Yeah, and people say no. Nope. In Australia, in a... it was called Nah, mate. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I don't yeah, reckon. nah. <laughs> yeah, nah, mate. Nah. It was called She'll Be Apples, mate. <laughs> um, but but like you know, a lot of characters. That's that's a line of dialogue for almost every character in this mm. movie. And it's interesting because it is. There are moments in this where the characters react. I think how they wouldn't in a kind of yeah horror movie. There's there's moments in this movie where the characters are just like. I'm not going out into this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to stay in the car all night. Yeah, that's right, exactly. And you would. And you would. Mm. Uh, best movie ever. Yeah, best movie ever. I, really I thought that was really – so the barn moment is where there seems to be some extra – Are we doing spoilers? Yeah, spoilers. Okay. We just said spoilers, Okay, Mason. great, great, great. Uh, we just said it, Mason. Okay, great. Mason. Yes. Uh, and it looks – it's like a moment from Signs where like some spooky alien creatures are coming towards him. It turns out to be kids or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But just I love that reaction of where it's again he's just like, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> Why would you further investigate? I would leave and come back the next day. Why would that's insane? Yeah, a, a lot of people. I, I, th- I think maybe that is uh, that that is probably maybe more resonant for like African American viewers, and I think mm. I think that's maybe like meant to be a sort of pointed. Yeah idea of like why people in these movies act insane and why would you kind maybe of maybe run into but we things. you know we don't know but i think that that is a very kind of realistic yeah reaction to i that. would also leave yeah i would also leave <laughs> um but yeah this this movie has elements of of neon genesis evangelion yeah. that's that's a thing that has been pointed out and it's, there's the um akira slide <laughs> there yeah kk palmer does a akira slide on a motorcycle it was incredible yeah um I, I also saw people say that if this was an m night movie people would like make fun of it and laugh at it and say the premise doesn't hold up and what silly people and all of that. But I don't know. I think looking at this and old, yeah. I mean, I loved old for yeah. reasons that we talked about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just don't think how oily um that guy was. He was very oily. That guy, he was so silver foxy. What's that guy's name from Dark City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, roof, 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 Sewell. Roof yeah, Sewell, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that guy's looking good. He isn't he? Just, yeah. but the, I think the execution on this was just flawless. And I also think what, what I also thought was really interesting that. It is kind of like Signs, which is an M. Night movie, but it's also like it's Jaws. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so the, the, and I'm so glad this wasn't spoiled, but the, the reveal of the extraterrestrial life form. Here's the was, thing also, mm. you see it on the poster. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, it's literally, the hat. it's a man's hat. It's, it's, it appears to be a man's hat in the poster. Yeah. But the, the, the being that, that is, that is, um, that is in question. Mm. It's not. It, we think initially it might be a UFO. It's an alien spaceship, yeah. you know, crewed by aliens, and they're abducting people or what have you. But it's some sort of alien animal yeah. that has ended up in Earth. It's, it's in Earth's it's atmosphere, like disc shaped. Yes. It also it might not be an alien, right? It could just be an ancient creature. That, sure, and yeah. I, I love the fact that it's also it's there for the whole movie. Like the cloud mm. is always there that it hides behind. Yeah, it's it's it can create its own stationary cloud. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's its that's its nest, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. And and, it, and it's there to can it it consumes people and then vomits them up and it's it's like a horse. If you if you look yes. at its eye, you spook it. Uh, which is yeah. yeah, which is also why the Stephen Yeun character survived the chimpanzee attack because. He's got the, there's the sheet in front of it, mm. the tablecloth, and also he's not looking at it when he gets the fist bump. Yeah. So, yeah. He, yeah. And then he thinks that, you know, because he's been, the reason why it's been hanging around, because he's, he's feeding at horses for, yeah, for a show. Um, but there's real, like that moment where it goes over their house and just like spits blood and, yeah, and, and bones and, 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 and leftovers and, yeah. and, and non organic matter that it can't eat. Yeah. Yeah. Horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> just- and just like the way, because it moves. Sort of like a like a kite almost, I guess. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It, it seems to be like mostly weightless or like mm. there's not much heft to it, but I guess it can still lift like twenty yeah. people up into it mm. at any at any given time. I um I also loved 
They brought in Michael Wincott. <laughs> That's point. just a um, just like a, a real oddball kind of. Uh, what would you what would you compare him to as a director? Like a Lars von Trier kind yeah, of. Yeah, maybe uh, sure. Yeah, kind of oddball. Who's because also all the technology goes out when when the when the creature arrives. So yeah. Yeah, they've, he's got a hand cranked camera because they, they they can capture footage of it. And I think also like the idea that at the end they get they use a well to take a picture of the alien mm-hmm. to then prove to people that it's real or whatever. Uh-huh. Like I think as a concept, literally like that's that's nonsense because you'd see that and go, oh, what right. is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. But uh-huh. I think as a whole and just like the like what how it is like two people not only desperately trying to survive in real life but also to maintain relevancy and, you know, keep, yeah. keep going. And capture a new thing. Like capture the, a new thing, capture yeah. Capture a new thing like their their ancestor. Yeah, you know, their 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 great 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 grandfather. Yeah, captured the images of the horse. I love that as well. Mm. That part of the storytelling, which also like, is that even true? Mm. You know, like that mm. story that they're telling people to. Yeah. You know, I I thought that was great. I I also read a really interesting thing about the design of the creature, whose name is something. I oh, it's remember. cool. Oh, it's um. Oh man. Ah. Well, we'll figure it out. I can't remember. I'm Anyways, gonna, I'm gonna look at it real quick. It unfolds it's like tracky dax yeah, or something. Yeah. It unfolds like a big, um, like a big flappy sheet kind of yes. anime monster thing. But apparently, some of that design was off. What like as a first interpretation of what like of what angels look like? Yeah, you know, like okay. this biblical kind, angels. Biblical angels. So like you can't kind of comprehend the scale. Jean jacket. Jean jacket. Yeah, because he was, was a like, former horse. He was like yeah. tracky dax. <laughs> you were close, and you know it's got like big flappy like waving arms and a big mouth in the middle and whatever and unfolds uh-huh. in this beautiful kind of butterfly kind of yeah. creature. But so it was designed off, as I said, the what some people interpret angels to look like, which makes sense if it's this ancient being where people would see that and it would suck people up and they're yeah. like, oh, they've been raptured or whatever. Yeah, right, this right. Is an a- this is a creature from heaven when it's just a monster just, yeah. just eating people, yeah. just f- buzzing about eating people. There's, I think there's even been talk of... Has there been talk of like a Nope sequel or something else in the oh, Nope Oh, great verse? question. Let's have a look. Reset future, James. Here we go. Uh, oh, Nope sequel teased by Jordan Peele. Okay. Now, he, okay, let me ask you this. Daniel Kaluuya's character, is he still alive at the end or is he dead? Yeah, I think he's alive. He was on that horse, wasn't I he? I think he's I would. I would love him <laughs> to be alive. Exactly. Okay. In July 2022, Perea, I don't know how that is, revealed that he had convinced Peele and the Universal Executives to change his character's fate in the film's climb. Oh, uh, in the film's climax from being killed primarily out of interest in a potential sequel, saying, there's no way the story's over in my head. Oh, he must be a cast member. Hang on. Uh, Was he the uh, the guy who worked at the, the, the no, electronics he's, yeah, store? Yeah, he's the tech guy. Yeah, Brandon, yeah, yeah. Brandon like Perret is Angel Torres, a tech salesman of Fry's Ele- Electronics. He yeah. was fun. So there's no – yeah, well, I didn't think he was dead either. Uh, there's no way the story's over in my head. There's no way. For how heroic everything kind of seemed at the end, I'm like, there's no way. They just – they leave the heroes like this. This is just the start of something new. Mm. Um the jean jacket designer, John O. Dabiri, suggested that Creature survived its apparent death at the film's conclusion. In an interview with the New York Times, Peel addressed a character that was cut from the film, listed on IMDb as nobody, saying, the story of that character is yet to be told, I can tell you that, which is another frustrating way of saying, I'm glad people are paying attention. I do think they will get more answers on some of these things in the future. We're not overtelling all of these stories. That's interesting. Oh, very good. Well, I, I mean, there was a Jaws 2, wasn't there? Yeah, and there also hasn't been a Get Out sequel, which I would have loved to have seen. But I, yeah. I want like I mean maybe I mean you know I, I guess we won't know like when when it seems to me that Jordan Peele has a lot of concepts in his head and he, yeah. and he wants to get them all out there and maybe once he's done a half a dozen of these he might be like let's revisit yeah let's revisit the Get Out universe or the or the Nope universe. universe yeah mm-hmm. maybe it's the one universe Mason oh. but it's not the universe where everybody's got a twin in the middle of the earth or whatever mm. that's a different universe sure I'm sure sure pretty confident yeah well all in all uh, even though we've spoiled it. Uh-huh. It's good. I think you should say it, folks. Yeah. yeah, it's good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I wish I, I I saw it on streaming. I wish I saw it at the movies. Yeah. I did not. The villain is this otherworldly threat, and it is also something that everyone has in common. Everyone's in relationship to the spectacle. Oh, it was a spectacle. That's what Jordan Peele said. That I didn't. That's say that. true. Yeah, that's true, Mason. Yes. Anyway, I don't think it's an alien. I don't think <laughs> it, I don't think it can go into Stella. I think it's like a weird sheet. You know oh, I mean? you think it's earth based? I think it's earth based. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Where's it live? I guess in that in cloud. cloud, mate. Okay. Were well, you not paying attention to the cloud? No, it wasn't. Should we talk about prey? Speaking of extra extraterrestrials. Oh, also, we should talk about like uh, I was going to say, KK Palmer. People, people are mad about it. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, it's fine. You should. I, I think she, oh, all the mock ups I've seen, she looks good in the in the thing. Yeah. And she's from Rogues from Mississippi. Perfect. Is 
there's black people in Mississippi. I don't exactly. Know. What? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Also, like, there's no. I think this has been pointed out, but there's no in the in the X Men A list. There's there aren't any. Maybe there are now in the modern one, but like in the classic lineup, there is there are no. There's no black characters who are from America. Right. Like Storm is from yeah, or maybe she was born in America, but she's she spent most of her time in Africa. Yeah, and like Bishop is maybe Australian. Like he's, yeah, he's maybe he's like, from the future. He's from the future, but I think he's sort of meant to be half Australian and half, okay. half Indigenous Australian, half something else. But there's no like just a just a black person who is American and was born in America, grew up in America, yeah. and has X Men powers. Mm. It's sort of weird that there isn't. What about that? given the premise of the X Men? What about know? Darwin? He dead. Yeah. In what in the in the also, movie he was in? Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's like I'll yeah. bring it back. Yeah, and I guess th- there's Sink, but again, I wouldn't consider these guys Sink. Sink it was in Generation X. Okay, I don't remember. And he sink. he died literally more than ten years ago in the comics, and they brought him back recently. So. As a sink. What yeah, about Morph? Sink. Morph could be black, could change into someone. I guess he black. could. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Mm. The character Morph. Mm. No, it doesn't matter. And look, I, I honestly, I just think that's it's a great choice. And I like you know with this her mixed with like the stoicism of like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and yeah. whatever. I think that would be fun if she you know zapped the powers out of her. <laughs> oh yeah, of course they have that. Um, <laughs> Have that bloody that bloody that bust up. They have a bit of a bust up, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Prey Mason. Speaking of bust ups, mm-hmm. cost sixty five million dollars. Anyway, the the, the 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 takeaway there was we think this sort of stuff is fun and yeah. fine, fine and fun and good. That's right. You don't need to worry. And about also, it. Disney and studios do the thing which they think is best for them, profit wise. And if they think that a bunch of people will yell about it and get them free publicity at the expense of the person in the movie being yelled at, they will do that anyway. Sure will. <laughs> and then send out a tweet that says we yeah. stand by this person. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Prey seems to be a moderate streaming success at the very least at $65 million budget. Um, I would have, I, I, I do wonder what this would have looked like as a cinematic release. No doubt bigger on a bigger screen. Mm. But also, so Predators made $126 million and The Predator made $159 million. They've never been big, huge box office draws. Mm. They've always done like, okay. Yeah. Uh, but do, I don't think they had enough faith in this franchise at this point mm. to, to release it to cinemas. And they should have because people loved it. Yes, and it was good. And a I, lot of people watched it. I will say this, though. Go on. I wish they just did the whole thing in Comanche. And I think also having it on streaming, you could do that. Yeah. you got the flexibility to do that. I think, you know, you can kind of roll a dice on something. The audiences might not be used mm. to necessarily because also a lot of this movie is not spoken. It's, so, so for people who can't remember, because th- this came out a trillion years ago, mm. the option, the options to watch this were you could watch it in English, yep, uh, because all the actors recorded their lines in English, uh, but you could also watch it dubbed in Comanche, the, yes, the Native American language, because all the actors came back and re-recorded their their audio, yeah, and you could do it with subtitles or without subtitles. So I watched it in Comanche with subtitles. I was like. Should I watch it without subtitles? Maybe I'll get the gist. Yeah. But I'm sort of glad that I didn't because I, no, I think there was nuance there that I don't think I would have picked up on. No. I also think the dub, I like, I, I watched it in English and then I, I went back and I watched like scenes of it in the dub and I just don't think the dub is very good and it's really distracting. Yeah. Uh, so I think if just film it like that, mm. I mean, they can't because it's done. It's too late. Yeah, it's <laughs> Maybe too late. Maybe the sequel, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Mm. We'll talk about that as well. But I think what this does though, it gets to the core of what makes like the first Predator good. Arnold Schwarzenegger's in it. Yes, that's right. And well, it I was, was for me. I got I cut out a I cut out a picture of him. I stuck, stuck it around there. Yeah, good. Yeah. I hope he was all right. Did he get through it? Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's like ah. <laughs> uh, you know. But I also enjoy, and I think people have kind of missed the point of how somebody defeats a predator. Big guns, the big, biggest guns, just firing. No, remember, Mason. Remember, James, remember in the first Predator where they all fire their big guns into the into the, into the jungle, that. and then the predator's like, "Ah, oh, you got, you got me. me. Oh, I'm dead now. You guys get out of here." You got me, I reckon. Just kidding. That yeah. doesn't do anything. See, the point of like the predator is that you can't brute force a predator. Yeah. Like Arnold is the, probably the strongest person to ever go up we've seen in a movie against one of these. Yes. And he's he's like, a, you know, he's just throwing him around like he's a paper bag. Yes. Like you cannot defeat. What, so fling him in the air and he just sort of <laughs> yeah, he just floats <laughs> around and you're like. <laughs> Try to snatch him. Yeah. Then he gets caught on the wind, yeah. So it didn't It didn't matter at the end of the day that Arnold is as strong as he is. Yes. And the same way that it doesn't matter the character in this, how strong that she is. Yes. She defeats him because he ignores her until 
she's perceived as a threat. Yes. But by then she's formulated a plan. Mm. And the reason she stayed... Also, I think this guy's a rookie. Yeah, I think he is too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the reason also she stayed, survived, and some people have said this is like, well, the reason she stayed, she survived is because, you know, he didn't even try to kill her, so he was ignoring her. Yes. That's that's in the movie. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's right. happening in the movie. Yeah. Uh, so, and then in fight, you know, but she stays alive long enough to realize what's going on and mm-hmm. formulate a plan. Yeah. Um, she's got the observational skills. Exactly. She's got the tracking skills. She's, she's got, got the, the stealth skills. She's got the axe on the on the rope and whatever. She steals that railgun thing. Yeah, she steals it's that cool. thing. Yeah. I think there's some CGI animals which don't look great in this. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a there's a there's some bear stuff which might not look great, but mm-hmm. again, it's like it's streaming, so I also understand that there are limitations to what mm. to what you can do. But I think uh, the simplicity of it worked for me, like, and the era really worked well as well. Yes. You know, I think one of the things that I – many things that I didn't like about the last one was the way they brought it to the modern day, but they didn't – it was just I, just nonsense, <laughs> Mason. It was just a nonsense movie yeah. when we, we talked about it. Um, but I don't know. I, I think the, even the things like the new look for the Predator. I mean, mm. there's always a bigger Predator, and this is one of the bigger ones that we've seen. Mm. But it was the right size. Remember the last one was like 10 feet tall I or do something? Remember that, yeah. too big, where this one felt like it was – like an appropriate size and maybe mm. a different subspecies or from a yeah. different continent or even a different planet. Mm. But you mentioned, though, you reckon he was a rookie, this one. I'm not basing that on anything other than a vague vibe. Yeah. I don't know. He, he didn't like he, – he didn't look particularly battle-scarred. I think they have like – they have like little things in their dreadlocks if they've been if, if they've done a thing if they've done a thing he didn't have the plasma cannon which I feel like is, uh, is I thought a, that was a new a bit of technology it might have been yeah, yeah that's true he had yeah. that laser dart thing he did have that laser dart thing yeah but yeah I, I even like that idea that they strip back all the weapons mm. and I, they did that on purpose because I think the director Dan Trachtenberg was like it's kind of a you know, if he's got a laser cannon and it's this era in time, then it's uh-huh. not it's not interesting just seeing him just like well, I, yeah. I think it would be interesting for, for And again it has been it's moment. been literally hundreds of years, so it, yeah. it it would make I'm I'm not sure of the timeline. I don't know if we've seen previous, you know, Predator I guess they had plasma cannons in Alien versus Predator. Yeah, they did. But modern uh, day. Yeah. No, I mean in the in the pre the pre the Aztec times. Oh, they did too, yeah. Mm-hmm. What of this? It's all canon, isn't it? It's all, yeah, no, no. Well, some's in the alien predator version, mm. some is the regular version. Look, my 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 canon would be that the, the canon yeah. is only given to, like, the veterans. I think it also might be a thing where... Or you have to buy it. You have to and buy you, it. Yeah, or you're from a different part of it or, yeah. you know, some people hunt with, like, a bow. Yeah, you know? or, yeah so, maybe it's just like, look, you you don't, on your first hunt, you don't get the plasma cannon because it would be too easy. Yeah, you know, that's right. Um. Anyway, good casting. I think Amber Midthunder is the the... The, uh, the the woman who wants to become a warrior, but of course society won't shan't be allowing that. I think yep. she was great. People are like, you should get her in a Marvel thing. She's in Legion. Oh, she is too. Yeah, she's no, in Legion. Know, yeah. yeah, she's. But Legion. again, if people want her in an MCU thing, I think people have said, oh, you should get her as as X twenty three. Oh yeah, or uh, a Wolverine's clone. That that could totally. I don't, work. Mind, I don't mind that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I thought the uh, what was I going to say? I'm missing got a bloody note here. I thought. There were some really good kills in it. There's one particular scene in like the fog where the uh-huh. predator comes in and there's a bunch of poachers yeah. and it's just a it's just a, like a massacre. Uh, yeah. But it's a really interesting one. There's a the, it's the shield like and all the way the yeah. shield works and after that as well there's a moment in in that where uh Naru who's Amber Midthunder's character like captures one of the poachers and just cuts one of his legs off. Yes. To just to yeah. to, to use him as a as a lure and I'm like that's brutal but you yeah. would back then. Yeah, absolutely. So those guys sucked. So yeah, no, most of them weren't good, but we did know that gun. We saw that gun where that guy had that gun. Well, I mean gr- great. So what well, well, I was going to say it is great. So because can, at the end of this, so so Naru defeats the predator yep. and and we get at the end in the credits. We get a sort of like a Native American kind of cave painting kind of yes. story that suggests maybe what happens afterwards. Mm. And what we do see is more alien, more predator ships rather arriving on Earth. Yeah. And so, and at the end, uh, and and the the Easter egg, the gun in this in this movie, at the end of Predator Two, when Danny Glover, the actor Danny Glover, defeats that predator, all the other predators show up, and because he is. He, he's, uh, you know, he's won the battle. They give him a gift, which is the, the, uh, the gift of friendship. The gift of but friendship, also but, but also this gun, and and it's revealed that of course it's it's uh, in this movie. So 
th- what we have to do now is you have to draw a a line between these two movies. Yeah. This, and the simplest explanation would be that they, they the Predators showed up and they killed this tribe yeah. and they took the gun back. But, James, how about this? Here we go. What I think might be a good idea for a sequel. A lot of people have been like, well, why maybe do a Predator in Samurai Times? Maybe do a Predator in a different, different we'll time. We'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe do a Predator in the jungle. Oh. You know, yeah, right. But... In the Alien versus Predator comic books, mm. there's a character that has, and we've talked about, we've talked it, about, about it in, uh, in our comic book club, mm. uh, Michiko Noguchi, who is, a, who is an Asian character who, who joins, she, she proves herself as a warrior and she joins the Predators in space. Yeah. Um, but they've never really done anything with that character in, in the wider universe. No. So I'm saying... And also, like, do some version of that. Do some version of that because if you remember Batman versus Predator, the comic book, yeah, Batman defeats the Predator and they gift him like a ceremonial sword. That's just that isn't just something they found. No, like that's significant to them. Yeah, so that would suggest the gun is significant to them as well. Can you say no? Like, no, I don't know. Thank yeah, I don't want to do this. I don't actually. want a sword. But it would suggest to me that like she. I, I think a good thing maybe would be well, she wants to hunt. And, she wants to hunt, yeah. and they're like, "How about come with us?" Because then the gun would represent it's a weapon of a warrior they respect. Yes, and so then they could be like, in Predator Two time, they could be like, "This is one of our greatest warriors had the gun or whatever." Yeah, I think that'd be cool. That would be cool. That'd be cool. Do you think there's like a longevity? Like they could even have a shop in the future or whatever. Sure, time dilation. Right, apparently, in time dilation, James. Thank you. Yeah. In Predators yes. Two, if they ever did a Predators Two, so in that movie that was set, it was on a, it was on an alien reserve planet where they they took all the people. Yeah. And yeah. the sequel, they get back to Earth and it's the future, and basically they'd just been on ice, and then they release them there, you know, like fifty years in the future or whatever yeah, right, it was, uh-huh. and then by the time they got back, it's the year twenty one hundred or whatever. Uh-huh. So I think that could be, you know, you could really bring her to any time if, yeah. you, if you really wanted to. Agreed. I don't think I want just pray to. Well, that just happened. That she just could happened. Say. Can you believe it? Um, I don't want to pray to uh-huh. where it's just the same thing again and it's, you know, it's, it's mm. a predator's come back but there's maybe more of them and on all mm. of that. I Like what's the point of that? You know, I like seeing the dog and I liked Chekhov's mud pit and all of those things. But yeah, right, right, right. this is an opportunity to do something different with it with the movie which most yeah. people seem to really enjoy i did think the finale of how she killed him was a little muddled okay sure. she stole the helmet yes and it's aiming and the thing shoots wherever the thing is and whatever yeah i th- like i understand i understand it but i think mm. it's a bit right i understand i and i think you know obviously see that i mean i think the thing is that and a, and a lot of people don't really acknowledge this in action movies a a lot of the time, especially mm. in the present day, is a lot of this sort of stuff is down to luck. Like it is yeah, kind of a last sure. ditch thing. Like so the 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 the, the, un, the way I understood that was so the 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 predator's rail gun when he when he activates the rail gun his his three dot sight lights up yep. and it, and the rail gun the the round will follow around and hit whatever is yeah. is looking at whatever whatever the red the dot laser. sight is looking at. But he thinks that the mask she takes his mask and it. He thinks it's lost. Yeah. So my assumption is there that he thinks it's just going to dump. Shoot fire. straight. Yes. That's but right. Then, yeah. But then he he doesn't realize until it's too late that she's recovered the mask and it's pointing at him. That being said, you're right. It it, it was a little bit muddled as to where it, where the mask was. Yeah. And like, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah it fine. was a last ditch thing. If it didn't work, I yeah. guess you'd try something else. Exactly. Yeah. But I also thought that I, I I liked how you know she managed to remove one of his arms and he was and shoot him in the back of the head. Yeah. And he was clearly dying. So he wasn't thinking, he wasn't thinking clearly. straight because he had a bullet in his yeah, head. Yeah, and he wasn't – he probably knew he wasn't going to escape this. Uh-huh. Even if he killed her, he wasn't mm. going – I can't imagine he would have done well. Like mm. they would have picked him up and just been like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> You're a you mess. You shot in the head. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> now, our, our pals over at Do Go On did an episode many years ago about the, the craziest duels in all of history. Okay. And it, one of them – uh, a doctor is uh, is um, challenged to a duel, and the first thing he does in the duel is he takes all his clothes off. And the guy challenging was like, "You know what? I don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> but apparently, that's because the way a lot of people, because the back in the day, those kind of percussion guns, yeah, like the the round wouldn't like go through your head and kill you and come out the other side. Mm. What would happen a lot of the time is you would get shot. I'd and, get a bit of cloth. Yeah, in the it, right? cloth would get pushed into your skin, yeah, like under, into your flesh, and because everybody's clothes were disgusting and dirty, yeah, you would get infected Infection. and you would die from that. So he's just like, if I'm not wearing any clothes, <laughs> I might survive this, and he did. So, you know, <laughs> so I can that do that. Uh, yeah, you could definitely do that. Uh, Dakota Beavers as, as her brother was, I he think, very great, good. Yeah. 
The Predator was good. Dane Delegier. He was very good, yeah. Um, I, I, I loved the, the look and the size and all yeah. of that. I mentioned that. But, and yeah. then he had that. He didn't have the metallic Predator mask. No, he, he had like the, a bone, the bone one. Alien mask. Uh, everybody was good in this, but... And the horrible, the horrible poachers were good. We're, yeah. a, we're a good, you know, apparently secondary they're, antagonist. They're French and German. I think it's a mixture because it's, yeah, right. it's not good, apparently. I, I wouldn't know. But also, uh, and of course, uh, Coco as the dog. Five stars. Five stars as the dog. Apparently, um, according to the director, he would, because the dog was not a like a trained Hollywood dog. She was just like a kind of... A kind of adopted mutt because that type it looks of, like a mutt. Like, yeah, Ollie's kind of like that. Like, what kind of dog is this? I don't, I don't yeah, know. like it's it's sort of a you know kind of a street dog who was not really trained for this sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, apparently the director was told like every time he presented a cut of this movie to his friends, they're like, "More dog, put more <laughs> dog in this." And he's like, "We have put in literally every usable frame of the dog. <laughs> every uh, every other frame of the dog is it playing up because yeah. it, it, it's not a Hollywood dog and it's just." running around following the predator and wagging its tail because he thinks it's fun or whatever. <laughs> so, you know. That's fun. It is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, more Predator, please. More Predator, please. Though the next one will be bad because that is how Predator movies work. It seems that way, yeah. <laughs> Not only will it be bad, it'll be woeful. <laughs> so it'll be atrocious. <laughs> Great. One of, look forward to it, folks. That's the Weekly Planet Guarantee, one of the worst <laughs> movies you've ever seen. <laughs> the Sandman, everybody. Ooh. Uh, this was a Netflix show. Which is probably going to get cancelled. You think so? Yeah, well, actually, this is a quote from Neil Gaiman, who, of course, wrote the original Sandman comic and had a big hand in this. We're stuffed, mate. Oh, I don't know what to do. Some people said she'll be apples, but I reckon she's stuffed, mate. She's That's what he said. She's not going to be apples. Mm. Uh, because Sandman is really expensive, I looked into this, it's $15 million per episode, and there were 11 episodes. Well, there were 10, and there was a bonus episode. That's right. Cat and whatever. And for Netflix to release the money to let us make another season, we have to perform incredibly well. So, yes, we've been the top show in the world for the last two weeks. That still may not be enough. Uh, also, this is not the first time that this is. There's been an attempt to bring this to live action. He leaked a script. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, because it was, <laughs> be, so that it was. Was it John Peters? Was the it was John Peters? The the he directed. Um, he famously produced some Batman stuff, some yep. like 1980s Batman stuff. Uh, the the first Kevin 90, Smith's Batman movie that yeah Superman movie that didn't happen. Yeah, people people will remember him from the uh, Kevin Smith Q and A story where. He, he got Kevin Smith to do some rewriting on a Superman script and he said Superman needs to fight a giant spider in the third act. Yes. And then, of course, that didn't get made, but then he produced Wild Wild West in which uh, the, the heroes, the titular Wild Wild West heroes fight a giant spider in the third act. <laughs> um, but supposedly the the um, Sandman script was so bad that yeah. Neil Gaiman leaked it on the internet and people read it and went, this is atrocious. We would don't never, make it. We, don't make this. We would never watch it. And, yeah. and they were, it forced their hand. So he's been pretty. And people were mad about that. They're like, how dare Neil no, Gaiman. good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, legally, is it right? Probably not. Probably not. But also, what are they going to do, throw Neil Gaiman in jail? Maybe. I mean, yeah. Yeah, maybe. And maybe he deserves it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> maybe he, get, he can get beheaded at the Tower of London. <laughs> Just what happens to criminals in that in that in that it's godforsaken true. land? I yeah. thought every single casting choice in this was was great. Also, and yeah. not, not only that, I love that Neil Gaiman went out of his way to defend somebody was a different race or color or sex or gender or whatever, mm. and he was just on the forefront of that the entire time. There, were, I saw a comment that was like, you know, you drew Lucifer to look like David Bowie, and now it's Gwendolyn Christie, and he's like, David Bowie's dead. Yeah. So we got. We can't get David Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. Not that it matters. Like if he yeah. was alive, it's it's it's, yeah. it's irrelevant. I think every piece of casting here is is really well. And he's also talked about. You know, I had I drew them this way. Did he draw that actually? He didn't draw it. Okay. Though. Well, that was created that way because it was the era. You know, and now if I created it now, I would have probably made you know yeah. more more diverse characters or whatever. Not that there was a lack of diver. I mean, it, you know, compared to this, I guess there was a lack. But you know, throughout. Uh, Neil Gaiman's writing career, mm. there hasn't been a, there certainly hasn't been a lack of diversity no. or you know d- diverse viewpoints and that sort of stuff. People are like, and I love a guy who's like, like he's older, you know, than us, which mm. is old. That's right. But he's you know growing and changing. Twenty two. Yeah, he's growing. Twenty two year old. <laughs> changing and learning. Yeah. You know, I think that's really cool. And you're not just like, no, everything's it's too mm. much now, and I I won't learn a single thing, and everything's too woke. The the early the earliest, uh, I believe, the earliest. Sandman artist was Sam Keith, okay. who is probably best known as the creator of the Max. Do you remember the Max? I remember the Max. The Max got was a very kind of surreal comic book series that got uh, an animated series in the nineties. Did 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very weird. Uh, but he's just this enormous hulking purple monster yeah. who exists in dreams. So, uh, you know. Like, an, like a cartoon show. Yeah, it got an animated series. 93 to 98. What? Yeah. How have we never seen this? I watched it at a comic book convention once. Did it Did it air here? Don't know. It, it did at that comic book convention. It's got like. This was, a, this was an MTV thing. So this is when MTV were absolutely oh, okay. going nuts. It was this and Liquid Television and, and Eon Flux and all that sort of stuff. So. Ah, so Channing Tatum and Roy Lee announced their intent to produce a film based on the Max. But uh, not completed. And that was in 2019. So that was just pre-pandemic. Hmm. There you go. Okay, great. Um, Mason. Go on. I like the way yes. that this feels episodic in a way that a lot of TV is not. Mm. You know how pop people will often be like, and I'm, I think maybe I saw an interview for this or I might have just been TV in general. might have been something for Breaking Bad uh-huh. or Better Call Saul, where it was a lot of TV kind of doesn't bother to do that. They're like, no, this is like a movie. It's like a long mm, movie. It's 10 hour, 10 and to 11 it's like, hour hey, movie. this is too long for a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> happened realistically <laughs> in this hour. A good example of that, and even though I enjoyed a lot of it, like Obi-Wan, it's like you could cut two episodes out of this easy. Yeah, right, This right. could have been two and a half hours. Mm. Um, and again, I, I like a lot of that, but I feel like this having individual issues of the comics or story arcs being one episode or two. Mm. And there are threads that follow through, obviously. Yes, yes. But I, I enjoyed the self-contained nature of so much of this. Yeah, they didn't. Neil Gaiman, you know, has, has clearly held out for a long time until he could make exactly the show that he wanted to make mm. with this. And But he should be in jail. He should be in jail, absolutely, and beheaded. <laughs> be in jail for a while, then beheaded. Yeah, there should be a mock trial. We all know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's right. And then he's beheaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, the the original comic books weren't, well, we're building up to a big story and so nothing's going to happen in these issues yeah. until we get to the end. It, clearly he was, you know, he was beholden to the concept of, well, there is an overarching story, but this thing, you know, isn't it amazing we're heaping praise on just the idea of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the idea just in this streaming era, the idea of, well, a, a, an hour of thing, a, an hour of a thing you watch should have a beginning, middle and end and, and be satisfying yeah. to watch. but. And there, there are there are certain arcs. I think that it's been such a long time since I've read the Sandman, so it is good. What what I enjoyed about this series is that I remember sort of vague elements to it, but I was all, I also ended up being quite surprised by yeah. A lot of and this I stuff. hadn't read all of it. So yeah. I was so so there that. is a there is an there's an episode devoted to to a man who hundreds of years ago decided that he would one day that he would never die. Yeah. And so and so, uh, dream and death, the two uh, the two kind of yeah. uh, cosmic embodiments of those like, of those concepts let's see it. let's see what happens <laughs> and so in the I, I, if i remember correctly in the comic books his story is 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 spread out over over several issues over oh, several okay, years yeah. but in this they went okay let's show his entire let's show his entire I think arc this was my favorite episode yeah, yeah. i mean there's a, there's that's a lot ben, of that's ben kingsley's son Ben Kingsley's son. Yeah, so Ben, ben Kingsley. Kingsley Jr. That's right. It's Ben Kingsley. It's Benny Jr. BKJ. Benny Jones. Benny Jones. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also thought Tom uh, Sturridge. Tom, Tom Sturridge, yes. So it was very good. Mm. And I think apparently they tried. Sturridge is a type of British porridge. Yeah, very good. It's even. You put a spoon in it. Does that spoon fall down, Mason? No, sometimes it springs out at you. <laughs> hits you in the eye. <laughs> but, uh... That's how Sturridge it is. <laughs> but I thought he. Um, apparently they chime with the bigger hair because in the comic yeah. book he's got this kind of sideshow Bob esque, not really. Yeah. But it's but that, I I think it would have looked too silly. I think they had the right level of yeah. pomposity. And just once the, again, I think I believe mm. originally some of the appearance of the Sandman was based on Robert Smith from The Cure. And again, shock of all shocks. he's aged he's ad, aged out of yeah. that role. Yeah, so absolutely, you, know, you can't get him. You got to get a you got to get a skinny, yeah. a tall, skinny man who looks a little bit like a. Like a matchstick. Yeah, I love the like the build of him as well. Like you mm-hmm. the first couple of episodes are like dedicated to him being captured. Yes. And I just I, I like the physicality of him and his voice and all of that. And also I guess this also speaks to Neil Gaiman. You see that he he learns and he becomes more human as the years go on. Like he has every reason to kind of turn his back on humanity and be mad. Mm. But he is constantly trying to improve himself and he's like he is full of like vengeance. Yes. But he's not that's not his go to setting yeah. and he has a lot of like forgiveness in him and you see that kind of come yeah. out over the episodes which i thought was was really great i also thought like the diner episode obviously people talked about as well how it's like a bottle episode where everybody's trapped in a diner and yeah well that's one of the elements that i um 
I mentioned that, that, you know, having read it years and years ago that I was like, because that, that is a, I guess we're doing spoilers for this, mm. but there, there, you know, a, a man who is in possession of, uh, uh, Dreams, Dreamstone, one of his... his he hasn't got all his stuff, Mason. You know, one of his sort of artefacts of powers, who in the comic books was Dr. Destiny, but they've sort of... Okay. You know, they're, they're, they're not doing the superhero-y stuff because I think it'll be too confusing. Yeah. Um, but he goes into a diner and he uses the powers to kind of make people's kind of most sort of primordial desires come mm. out and they all end up killing themselves and each other in horrible ways. And having you know read it years ago, I'm like... Does anybody get out of this? I kind of hope that some <laughs> people do, but I'm like, but I'm, you know, yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't. They all died. They all had a big death, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I also thought the there's a there's a serial killer convention that he visits. Oh yes, uh-huh, and he's sure. just like, this is a time where I could just do use all my powers and destroy everybody's <laughs> mind at once. I, I thought that that was great, and just the idea of the serial killer convention is it's it's so brazen and open. Like yeah, it's, right, right. right <laughs> yeah. It's just like in this hotel and whatever. I thought that was. That was really great. And there's also an episode of a kid that's been kidnapped. Yes. Who is being protected by, because when he gets imprisoned, a bunch of his creations, like nightmares and dreams. and When, that, when Dream gets imprisoned, yeah, yes. Escape or leave or and create their own kind of life. Mm-hmm. And one of his nightmares escapes and chooses to help this kidnapped boy. Yes. Uh, and then when, you know, when he finds her, he's not like, like he is mad initially that like, you know, you're a creation of mine and this is not mm-hmm. your job as a nightmare to go and do this thing. But uh-huh. he, one of those things that he learns where he's yeah. like, this person has made this decision can think for themselves and shouldn't be punished for, for taking these steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's a kid's got little Sandman powers. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> he's, there, there, are, there are some fun little nods to kind of, for people who don't know, the the, the Sandman was created uh, originally. There, there, were, there, were, there were The Sandman was created by Neil Gaiman for DC. They were like, we, we have this Sandman character. We've had a number of yeah. Sandman-style characters over the years. We would like... To, to you to make a, a new Sandman, just make him different than all the previous ones. And yeah. if if I remember correctly, it was uh, the Sandman was originally going to be put in the regular DC universe, like all the old ads for yeah. him at the time were just like, this is a new DC thing. But then they created Vertigo, which was kind of a an imprint for sort of weirder, more mature, sort of more adult-oriented comic book stuff. And they were like, this is going to be the new... Uh, Weird stuff. Yeah, this is gonna be and, and and Sandman's gonna be the flagship book for this. So, but but I, I think at that point, uh, Neil Gaiman, Sam Keith, and all the other artists had had created enough stuff that was sort of sort of connected to the DC universe. So right. the first couple of years of the comic books, there are elements that that sh- share in with the with the regular DC universe. So, for no. example, in the comic books, like I said, one of the people that acquires uh, one of Dream's artifacts is Doctor Destiny, and he uses it to create weird. His, his weird dream controlling super science, they they retconned that in. Yeah. But in this, of course, they don't want to use him, so it's, he's just... David Thewlis. He's just David Thewlis, who's getting a bloody another comic book movie role, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he was Hades he was, or whatever. Uh, Ares, yeah, he was Ares, Ares in Wonder Woman, right, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I liked all the little nods. Like, yeah. you know, when when the when the little boy is, uh, you know, he's been kidnapped, but but he's in his dreams where he's Sandman, he's fighting like classic Justice Society villains. Like, mm. you see Captain Cold and Johnny Sorrow. And, yeah. Yeah. Were they things. named? Yes. Oh, they were. Okay. Yeah. She. He's uh, the 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 woman who's looking after him is like, oh, who is it this time? Is it Johnny Sorrow? Is it bloody oh, whoever okay. else? That's and it's cool. like, we see him all little, and he he gets the um he gets the costume of the Jack Kirby Sandman, right? Okay. From the seventies, yeah. maybe. That's cool. It is cool. Mm. What do you think about the mind fight with death? Uh, Not death. Uh, Lucifer. Lucifer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I believe that is directly out of the comic books. Yeah, but, but just uh, the idea of just you could have just you could have opened with hope. You could. That's true. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like if I you have haven't, got... folks, if you haven't seen it, instead of <laughs> or whatever it is, it hope I can't remember. Yeah, friendship. Dr- I don't know. <laughs> dream is ch- a dream. In order to get one of his artifacts back, goes to hell, and yeah. and a demon has one of his artifacts, and, and the demon's like, well, challenge me, and I will. Uh, I'll, uh, if you win, I'll give it back. And yeah. uh, the demon chooses Lucifer, the all powerful Lucifer, as his as his uh, champion. Mm. And then rather than punching on Dream and Lucifer have a have a concept fight. Yeah. And they just say a bunch of stuff. And I I you know, I it I think it works in the concept, in in the in the in the mm. context of the of the show, and it works in the context of the comic books. But again, I would have just said, Well, I'm Superman actually, and he's invulnerable, <laughs> so don't worry about it. And infinity. He's in and infinity. He's <laughs> I'm it's I'm actually uh it's, it's Superman, but he's got the infinity gauntlet. So <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. 
There's also a death episode where he wanders around with death, yes. which I thought was quite good, just mm-hmm. collecting, just reaping souls, but in, yeah, a, yeah. in a real cool, calm way. Yeah. Like, hey, let's go, man. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let's do it. Wow, there's a, the bonus cat episode I thought was – I didn't actually didn't see that. I haven't watched it. You should watch it. It's totally okay. worth watching. I really, I really enjoyed this. I, uh, I, I think Neil Gaiman also, we talked about this, has the opportunity to take this somewhere else. Right, yes. Which is great. I don't know whether anybody else would pick it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would I would love that to be the case. Mm. And it's the biggest show in the world, but is it enough? <laughs> I don't know. Can they turn it into some sort of reality show mm. competition where people can dress as various members of the of the uh, the endless and win a part of a four point five six million dollar oh, prize? Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Here's a question for you, actually. Sandman, real life. <laughs> what if Sandman, real life? Uh, was Boyd Holbrook in? He was in Logan. He was in Logan, yeah. He had was he also hand. in The Predator? Yeah, he was. The okay, right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Had, nice had, return from him. I think he's. I think he's suitably, he good uh, he had suitably menacing. Yeah, he had yeah. Teeth eyes. Uh, like Pat Oswalt as Matthew the Raven. See, that's the, I, that. I didn't like that. Okay, because it was so obviously Pat Oswalt. Right. Okay. I think he's terrific, but I, I think that for me took yeah. it, took me out of it a little bit. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Uh, who else was good in this? I think Gwendolyn Christie was great as Lucifer, and Jenna Coleman as uh, Joanna Constantine. Was that a rights thing? That's to a good not question. use John Constantine. No, I think it might have been because. I think we, maybe we mentioned it before, but Joanna Constantine in the comic books is a is a um, is an ancestor of John Constantine, yeah. and I maybe I think they we just, see in this. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think they maybe they just wanted a through line mm. to be like, okay, well, he meets Joanna, he meets an ancestor of Joanna in the past, and he's the present day version. I think maybe that was I would have. I think, but I, it also wouldn't shock me if because there's been so there's so many other Constantines. Yeah, in you know, there's the CW one and there's the Keanu Reeves one. Maybe yeah. they were just like. Or maybe it was a, it could be a bunch I think of things. He, I think he just I think from memory he just thought this is that'd be interesting. Yeah, maybe. I mean it, again, like it, it might have been that and also mm. other if if you put in a John Constantine, a John Constantine, yeah. people would be like, Oh, but he doesn't look like Sting and he doesn't oh but he doesn't yeah. look like Keanu, which one is it? What what part of the what part of the ongoing DC, EU, CW, what is the thing? And he, I imagine maybe Gaiman was just like, it's none of them. Yeah. And if I make it a different character, people will stop, will not ask me questions about where it fits in a larger comic book universe. Yes. This is the same with all the other stuff, I think. You know? I love all other stuff. What we didn't get, and I I guess it's not really part of the, the Sandman, the mystical kind of Sandman universe, I would have liked to see a nod to the 1930s Sandman, the, okay. the, the mystery man guy. Maybe we'll get that in subsequent Seasons, if we ever get a subsequent season. Yeah. Uh, but if if people want to check that out, uh, I think people should read the comic books as well. If you like this, I mean, I love reading a comic book. I'm happy. I'll flick, comic I'll flick through a comic book. Is that and there's also Sandman Mystery Theater, which is kind of a, mm. uh, a, a sort of a, it was a sort of a modern retelling of the pulp Sandman character, who's just a right. guy in a guy in a suit and a gas mask punching someone, just punching someone. Yeah, love that. Mm. Well, Mason, it's time. Oh, what's we have to talk about Pinocchio. Okay, is this what we read? What we're going to read? No, no, we're, oh. we're still. This is the main okay. part of the show. It's okay, well important. that's all right because I remembered I have something in what we read and what we're going to read. Terrific, so it's fine. Okay. Anyway, you made us watch Pinocchio. No, I only watched ten minutes of Pinocchio. God damn it! <laughs> that wasn't Man. intentional. You owe me big time. You owe me a flavor wrap, James. <laughs> Uh, well, Claire has been busy doing a lot of interviews and stuff. Ooh. So I haven't had the opportunity to sit down and watch Pinocchio, and I didn't want to make my son watch Pinocchio. Sure. Because I heard nothing but bad things. And, you know, maybe it's dark and twisted. I don't know. It's not. So, um, look, I know we talked about how anybody can be any race or color or whatever, but we talk about the Tom, Tom Hanks being Italian. An Italian. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even the first. It's Italian erasure, Mason. It is. This isn't the, even the first time this year he's played a vague European man. What was he in? Yeah, Elvis. Oh, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Have you watched it? No, not yet, but yeah, I've great. seen enough clips of him. <laughs> to know that you love it? Yeah, I love I it. I don't actually obviously care about that. Um, yeah, I just I, um, I just couldn't also. I just, I just <laughs> hated it. What did you think? I mean, it's – look, technically – yeah, I guess it's interesting. All the clocks were different Disney characters. There's, yeah, and there's a there's a there's a mo- like as an example, there's a moment where Jiminy Cricket is looking inside. I think he's looking inside Giuseppe's. No, that's not the character. What's Tom the character? Name? Yeah, but Geppetto. what's that? Geppetto's. There we go. Um, I was thinking Papa Giuseppe's genuine <laughs> Italian pizza, but uh, he's looking inside. He's he's outside and he's looking. I think he's looking in Geppetto's workshop, and you see just the window, and the window looks like a perfect. It looks like a real pane of glass with just like a little bit of like dirt and yeah, mold sure. around it, and it's just so yeah. well done. And like all the textures are well done, but it's just it's just from what I can tell, it is pretty much a frame by frame remake of the original, 
and it's just not very interesting. <laughs> it's just... So he ends up in the whale. Is that true? Yes. How does that happen? I don't think I've ever seen it. Well, it's not a whale. It's, it's a monster. It's a sea monster that looks a lot like a whale. Oh. So the, the basic... Ah. Pl- yeah. So the basic plot is that uh, uh, G- Geppetto, he's all alone, but he, he carves a wooden boy. Yep. And then he goes to sleep, and then, a, then a, um, the, the star, the wish upon a star star... Gives him, uh, makes him alive, and the blue fairy shows up and is like, "I'm, you, you, I'm going to give you, yeah. a con- give you a consciousness yeah. and all this sort of stuff." Yeah. But then you won't become a real boy unless uh, you prove you're brave and something, something, whatever. Like a real boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Geppetto sends him to school, and he gets waylaid by a fox played by Keegan Michael Key, who's yep. like, "I'm going to make you a star." And then he goes to a. There's one. There's a couple of good jokes. Okay. The, at the end, uh, he goes. Uh, at the end, when he finally ma- ma- meets up with Geppetto again. Pinocchio recounts his the entire adventure and, and Geppetto's like, You did all that in one day? And I'm like, that was pretty funny. It was a good it's look, me retelling it is not, sure. it's not no, good. No, no, it's a great joke. But I think uh I think Tom Hanks really sells it. Okay. But then he uh he he, he gets put in a, a traveling circus show. There's an evil circus guy. Turns into a donkey. Yeah, and then no, well then, James, <laughs> then he goes he goes, he escapes there, and then he goes to <laughs> I feel so bad I made you watch this. That he wasn't goes, my intention. It no, wasn't I, a trick, amazing. I feel I'm, I think I have seen the original Pinocchio, and it's the same. But um, <laughs> and then he goes to Pleasure Island, which is where all the the naughty children the go. Because go. They think they're going to have the greatest time, but then Luke Evans, who is a who is an evil guy, yep. if you do enough evil on Pleasure Island, you get turned into a donkey. Magic turns you into a donkey, and then he sells the donkeys for donkey meat. I think, but then he escapes, uh, and then. But and in meanwhile, Geppetto has learned that he's gone out to sea at Pleasure Island, so he sells all his clocks and he goes to. Um, <gasps> but he loved his clocks. I know, but he loves Pinocchio more. Remind him of his wife or something. Yeah, something. Um, and then he, but then he goes out into the ocean. He buys, he buys a boat, but then they sort of meet in the middle, and then they get eaten by uh, the the big sea monster a whale, and then they they start a fire in the sea monster and they escape, and then it's like pretty much yeah. How does he turn into a regular boy? He doesn't. They're like, maybe one day he become a real boy, but what? maybe this maybe what maybe there's more stories to come with Pinocchio. That's crazy, really. Yeah. I don't want that though. <laughs> I didn't finish it. Uh-huh. I just the moment where he was just like, Oh, I'm so sad. Because mm. My son died, so I've yeah. made this wooden boy. Oh, I could never sell my clocks. I'm so sad because my wife died. Mm. I'm like, hey, stop talking to yourself, man. Oh, you oh. think that's maybe why he hasn't he hasn't got another wife? <laughs> No, I just thought it was really heavy-handed of just like well, that's how they did it. Those things the could have been inferred. You just show a picture. Yeah. Mm. There's his kid and his wife, or whatever. I mean, look, and underneath it says, "My kid and wife are dead." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. written that on the picture frame. Yeah. yeah. And then Elaine from Seinfeld shows up, and she's like, "I need a little wooden boy for the team." Should I watch this? Thunderbolts. <laughs> Should I show my kids this? I don't know. Show them the original one. Isn't that spookier? Yeah, I think it is spookier actually. Yeah. yeah. And it, well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, technically, I guess this is an interesting achievement, but it's not. It's not as interesting as is you know, two hours of hand drawn, you know, beautiful yeah. hand drawn animation. Whereas this is just, well, we built the Pinocchio character model and yeah, we put in this scene and this scene. We I don't know. It. I didn't like his eyes either. Huh? I thought like the painted on it kind of right. looked like the lack of like I think outline on his eyes. Right. Just right. like I don't know. I don't okay. know. Anyway, I loved well. it. Is that it, Mason? It's not it. No, it's certainly not it. Because we've got more things to do. Anyway, I apologize. I did not I, I it wasn't my intention <laughs> to trick you into watching Pinocchio. <laughs> next time you next time you uh next time you say we're watching a thing, I'm gonna text you every ten minutes. Like you still watching this? You still I, watch even if you're sitting next to me in the cinema, I'm like, you still paying attention to this? You still paying attention to this? <laughs> I've never not watched maybe something. It does turn into a real boy in the original, but this is maybe perhaps more authentic to the uh I couldn't tell. Also, you. we should stress that this is not the this is not the live action version that came out a couple of years ago, nor is it the Guillermo del Toro still one, which is out. still coming out. This is a different one. Have you seen the Paulie Shaw one? No. You haven't seen this clip? No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, I'm going to play it for you right now. Right. <laughs> you really not seen this? I think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ben mm. sent me this. Oh. Um, ben, the editor, uh, editor yeah. of course. So just tell me when, just you'll say. Okay. Well, this Maybe is CGI Leonardo. also. No, he'd grow up to be a turtle who only cares about pizza. I don't believe my eyes. Your name will be Pinocchio. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> I see where he's going with it, but... I 
love it how it just it, it, it's just pulling father. Yeah. <laughs> you just recorded it over the phone, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the cast is pretty good, like compared to that, especially. No, yeah. uh, it's, it's Joseph Gordon Levitt as Jiminy Cricket, yep, which I yep. wouldn't have known unless. Uh, yeah, he that, nails that. I think, yeah. yeah, Lorraine Bracco is a, is it from from of uh, course uh, the Sopranos. Oh, is uh, is a seagull. Keegan Michael Key is a fox, but he also has this hideous mute monster cat sidekick. Okay, he's just a freak, just a real horrible little freak. Just a freak, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the kid who plays Pinocchio, pretty good, I thought. Benjamin Evan something. Ainsworth, yes. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, and Luke Evans is good as the coachman. I think. I think he's he's particularly. Uh, He'll dip into a live action fable or something. Yeah, won't you? yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, love Luke Evans on the screen. Good it's stuff. true. I love his Instagram. What a charisma. He's always shirtless. And he's very fit. He's always a, very having fit. a drink in a yeah, beach yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on Instagram. <laughs> All right. A little plug for Luke Evans' Instagram. <laughs> Shall we move on? Yes. But to what? Uh, let's move on to what we're reading. What are we going to read? What are we going to read? As if we haven't been bloody reading a bunch of stuff. He's right. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading? Wow. Wow, indeed. We come in here and we say, what have we been doing? That's right. That's what we say to each other. Uh, what do you mean reading and doing? I watched a movie uh, which has been out for a little while, but I forgot it was happening. But uh, The uh, Happening? No, not The Happening. I've, oh. never, I've never seen The Happening. Um, it's fascinating. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, uh, Brendan Fraser's got a lot of uh, a lot of heat going on. Oh, the Whale is apparently the, the very whale good. The Whale is apparently very good. He's got a lot of Oscar buzz. He would have got a lot of heat for the bloody Firefly in, in Batgirl, but of course that got cancelled. Yes, very good. Uh, but he, I, I decided to check out another thing he's in, which is a uh, Steven Soderbergh movie called No Sudden Move, which came out last year. Oh, I haven't but seen it's on that. The bloody, it's on all your bloody streaming platforms. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's like a period sort of heist movie. What's sort of the period? Like the 50s. <gasps> but here's, here's the cast. So it's Steven Soderbergh. Ooh, loving this it's cast. written by Ed Solomon, who did Men in Black, among other many, many yes, things. Yes, yes. Uh, but here's the cast. Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, David Harbour, John Hamm, Amy Simons, Brendan Fazek, Kieran Culkin. Uh, How have I never Ray Liotta, The late Ray Liotta, Bill Duke, Matt Damon is also in this movie. Did you say John Hamm as well? John Hamm is also in this movie, yeah. Sebastian Stan is in it? Is he? Yeah, apparently. I don't remember. Maybe he's that at the all. voice of a computer. He might be the voice of a computer, yeah. Damn, man. This, how have we not heard of this? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So it's good? Uh yeah, it's really good. Uh yeah. See the leap? Brennan Fraser, no, yeah. he's he's got a significant role though. Yeah. Okay. He's like uh he's he's a guy, he's one of well, it's a, it's a smallish role, but he's a guy, he's he's uh he's like um he's a guy making the, the heist happen. He's organizing all the, the Oh, he's the, the heist man. He's, a, he's organizing all the blokes you need. For the, I'm going to put that in my list of things, Mason. Yeah, it's good. No sudden move. So he. So was it? Is it Ocean's esque? No, it's more of a um, the bank job, the Italian job. It's closer to the bank job, I would suggest. You, okay, yeah. the Italian job. Which one? It's the original or this? The, no, the bank job, James. Which one? The only one. Oh, very good. Yes. I like that movie. Mm, it's good. Uh, Mason, uh, we both read Superman Up in the Sky for our comic book club. Which is 2019. It's written by Tom yes. King and illustrated by Andy Kubert. It's very good. It's really good, right? Uh, that will be out in a couple of weeks, though, because at BigSandwich.co right now, if you do want to sign up for nine bucks a month, it's like our private Patreon. We did a commentary for the 1990 Captain America movie. <laughs> we said, why not? We said, why not? Also, it's on YouTube, so if you did want to watch it along with this, it's on YouTube. You don't have to buy it. You don't <laughs> yes. have to buy a weird bootleg or anything. Yeah. It's on YouTube. The weird bootleg is ready for you, right? That's right. It's uh, nobody's ever bothered to take it down for some, take it down for some reason. What a wild assortment of stuff on YouTube. Whenever yeah. you know, just a uh, so you can sync it to that. You would think. I'm going to check right now to see if it's still on there. What do you think? We looked at it and so they took it down. Well, maybe. <laughs> Captain, Captain America. Guys, it's still there. Of course, it is. That's wild. So that's, You'd think because you would. Think. It's interesting, isn't it? Though, as a movie. <laughs> Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. The, well, look, what I would say it's also about not it, as bad as I thought it would no, be. No, no. I mean, it's sort of. It's not great. No, I mean, it's you know, it's it's probably a step below your your Batman eighty nines and that sort of stuff. But it yes, does have a, it is a step significantly. Below that. No, it's significantly. <laughs> and there's some bizarre choices in it in terms of storyline and casting and yeah. Why the Red Skull is Italian and not a Nazi? There's a bike sequence which unfolds very rapidly. There's a there's a couple of there's a couple of scenes that are hectic. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. Just that are absolutely worth the price of admission, which is free. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, people should check that Not out. Not with our commentary. That'll cost you. Yeah, that'll this, cost you. The movie is free for some, some reason, but yeah. ours isn't. But isn't it interesting that Marvel haven't or Disney haven't gone, we'll get rid of this? I don't think they care. Okay, well, we'll see, won't yeah. we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got anything else? Because I've got another thing. I don't have any more things, James. Go for it. I'm going to talk about Andor episodes one to four. Oh. But I'm going to not do spoilers. Uh, I think this might be the best Star Wars series they've made so wow. far. Uh, it's only, I've only seen the first four, obviously. but it's Is it filled with Easter eggs and references? Your, your, no. Your watermark for what is good. It's not. I didn't know if you saw that. There was, um, I think it was Grace Randolph did a review. I did that see that, yeah. like. This has got no Easter eggs in it, and it's boring or whatever. I don't know what she said, but it was the, the it was the it was the criticism. That's was, what I was talking about. There was no, there's not enough Easter eggs, but that to me is a strength. Mm. I think the fact that this doesn't really rely on anything uh. outside of Andor. Have we seen this? A few like Mon Mothma shows up, mm. and a few other bits and pieces, but it's it's very separate. There's no sand planet. There's <sighs> no you're not like oh look, it's a lightsaber and a whatever. Is there a planet of pale British men? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of that. That's what I like. That's what I like from the original. Yeah, it, it feels like if you – I think if people are – If I like, made a Star Wars? If you made a Star Wars but yeah. you actually managed to pull it off and make it good, I think this could be it. But I think also I'm halfway Tony there. Gilroy, Yes. I don't think he – who came in and to redo some most of Rogue One oh, or whatever yes. he did. I don't think he likes Star Wars. Okay. And I think that's good. Right, because like I, Harrison Ford. Like Harrison Ford. I think it's because he's, he's made this narrative which, again, for the most part is interesting – and self-contained, all leads into Rogue One. So not like Star Wars. No, like, well, no, it doesn't rely on like when's Obi Wan gonna meet whatever. Yeah. And again, yeah, I thought yeah. Obi Wan was all right. It's fine. Mm-hmm. But I also think that if you grew up with Star Wars and you're and you want an adult Star Wars and you're sick of like, uh, you know, when Star Wars is for kids, so this isn't my complaint. But if you're looking for something that's more adult, mm-hmm. this is. I mean, it's, it's still Star Wars, but yes. this is that. It also feels like the narrative has like purpose and a and a point. Like mm. you can see where it's going. Apparently, yeah. it was going to be five seasons, but five um, seasons, five seasons, five years leading up to Rogue One. But oh. the guy who what's his name? Because Cassian Andor, Diego Luna was like, "I'll kill myself if I do five years." So they're like, "We'll do two seasons." Yeah, right. So they're moving everything ahead. It's all, but it doesn't feel conde- doesn't feel like it's condensed. It, again, I've only seen four. But it feels like a storyteller or a set of storytellers who have an idea of what they want to do. And this is not – it doesn't feel also like a knee-jerk reaction to the previous thing that upset people. Yeah, right, right. Or it's filled with fan expectation because I don't want a prequel to Rogue One. I don't even like this era. Like I'm sick of it. Yeah. But just seeing a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff and you visit Mon Mothma and it's like – Oh, well, an Easter egg. Yeah, but it's like – no, but it's like you see her before she – you know, she's openly... Cassian, you've got to protect this Yoda egg. <laughs> It'll turn into a Grogu. <laughs> but like Mon Mothma, you see her... I guess I will. In her, in her day-to-day life and it's like, oh, this is so this is before she was openly like rebelling and right. people are watching her. Like people yeah. know. And you see like the Empire spy network and how that works and all the bureaucracy. There's like a private, like uh, there's, a, there's a private security force in it, which is like a rung below the Empire. Yeah, right. We're just like people. I like our the, uh, cops, our Star Wars cops. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah they're renter cops basically yeah. and they're just like a bunch of like people who don't give a shit or mm. social climbers or whatever. Yeah, right. And I, so the dynamic of that was really interesting. Stellan Skarsgård is like a really fascinating character as well. With um, a haircut change it seems at some point. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, there is. Oh, I won't get into that. But, dramatic. Um, Does he get dumped and he changes? <laughs> yeah, he gets dumped. Yeah. Does he cut his hair? But, um, he gets bangs? Yeah, look, I don't want to talk it up too much because I think also if you're sick of Star Wars, if you hate Star Wars, if you hate Star Wars Disney, I can't imagine any of this is going to sway anybody. But I kind of hate Star Wars. Yeah, but I, maybe I'll enjoy it. It that, sounds like I'm going to enjoy this. Now, does the narrative suffer at any point because we know that the main character at some point is going to be absolutely torn to, into his component atoms by a Death Star super laser? No, I think oh, he's good and it's fine. Okay, also, right. I think for um, clarity's sake, this is my social media reaction as opposed to an actual review. Oh, for, this is for, what for, embargo, for embargo purposes. Yeah, this is not a, this is not a review. Oh, Does that work if I say What that? a fine line. I yeah. don't know. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like we're going to get blacklisted from yet another distribution <laughs> service, James. <laughs> James. Anyway, so that's uh, first three are out this week, and which is good. I think if they had have done one... It's not enough. Like three is good. Three really good. You're going to spend moving. this entire week swanning about being like, oh, but you never Look know what's going to happen in episode four. I am going to do that, yeah. Yeah. Insufferable. Anyway, you got to watch it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it will. Looks fun. Cool. 
Anything else? That's the whole thing, I think. Of the show? No. Mason, let's yes. do more show. Okay, let's do more show. For example, we could do a segment called Letters. Okay. And I've got a theme song for Letters. Let's do it. Might run right now. The classic one was Letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do Letters. Letters do be here right now, Mason. Letters do be here right now. If you do want to send a letter to the show, you can hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Uh, Did we right. get a, a absolute bevy of um, emails this week, Mason? We got a bevy, Because you had a big sook about we didn't get enough emails. We, we did have sook. a big sook. We had, we had a bunch of them were in spam. We had a, we had a, we had a big sook. This is, uh, this is an interesting anecdote from a person whose name we shall not reveal. Oh, yes, I did read this one, and I'm very excited for this. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, hello, perfect, wonderful James and Meso. Hello. It's me, a longtime fan of your show. I initially read that as it's a me, a longtime fan of your show. So we and know this person is Italian. That's right, and, well, yeah. and that's appropriate, given the subject. I also watched House of Gucci the other day. I and? Liked, I liked it. It's fun. It could be better though, right? It certainly could be better. Like, it's an inter- like wow, what an interesting story that's not told as well as maybe it could have been. But... Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. Jared Leto's really good in it. Fabulous. Well, speaking of, <laughs> uh, this person says, I know Month Beer has long since passed us, but does, oh, it, come does on, anything that. truly end? That's a terrible thing to I say. I wanted to share a story with you about Jared Leto. Please. I'm a comedian in Canada and was living and performing in Toronto when Suicide Squad, the first one, was shooting here. One night I was performing in a club when one of the staff came backstage before the show and said, just a heads up, Jared Leto's in the audience. Try not to single him out. We are all very excited because maybe we'd meet this famous, handsome celebrity man. Mm. When the show began, he whipped off his toque, a.k.a. beanie, if you speak American, to reveal he had acid green hair. Then he would listen for a joke, wait for the laughter to die down, and then shriek, ha 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 almost as though he was mocking the audience for laughing. Uh, this ding-dong was in character as the Joker, going full method for a role when he would inevitably only be on screen for 11 seconds. <laughs> he was completely pulling focus, making the show super awkward. We weren't allowed to say anything or kick him out, so he just ruined the show for a full hour and a half. Uh, many Toronto comedians have stories like this An one. An hour and a half. We sit around telling stories about it at parties and events like that one episode of the Batman the Animated Series where all the kids are telling stories about Batman, except we're telling a story about a guy who sucks. Sorry if the story was long. Uh, happy month of the year, gentlemen. That's hardly the uh, the longest story we've ever been sent. Oh, very true. Fascinating. And oh, I appreciate that it has been broken up into paragraphs yes. as opposed to just one long run on sentence. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't also have to be like the paragraph doesn't even have to make sense. But yep. if you could just space about. That's, yeah, that'd be great. Appreciate actually, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating stuff. Mm-hmm. He went full method. Yeah. And there's nothing I appreciate more. Definitely. Than Jared Leto just. Mm. <laughs> yes. Why is he Why is he like that? It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tweet here, Mason, from Go JC on. Fox, who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. We need more details on this, please and thank you. Okay. And you might be like, what's that in relation to? Uh, there's a clip from Round the Twist that went uh, oh, yes. viral this week. Uh-huh. where uh, So Round the Twist, if you don't know, was a, a children's television show. Uh, it was based off the short stories and work of uh, Australian kids author Paul Jennings. Mm. And it was like spooky and strange happenings to these kids who lived in a lighthouse. And some of them were terrifying. And this particular one was a, it's a scarecrow coming to life. And mm. it's you see its tongue under the scarecrow, the hay, and it, it pulls yes. the scarecrow stick out of its back uh-huh. and it chases a girl in a clown costume. I remember seeing that as a kid and just being like, why would you make this? This is the worst thing I've ever seen. I hate this. It's terrifying. There's a lot of that. Mm. There's an episode where there's so many seagulls that their house gets pooped in by birds. Mm. It's like uh, it's it's like snow, but it's bird poop. There's an episode where a kid eats a bunch of snails and you see it on screen. There's an episode where a ghost, they go into a, a, a spooky car place and they just steal a skull and they mm. to get it from a ghost. Or, do you remember this shit? Yeah, I do remember Horrifying. it. Horrifying. Yeah. And it wasn't like goosebumps where it's like, ha ha, there's a werewolf and whatever. Isn't mm. this fun? It's like. Horrifying imagery, mm. terrifying, yeah, spooky stuff. But I guess the idea was they're like, we'll leave you alone in this coastal town and just make, <laughs> just make one of these every week, and we don't care what's in it. I've it been was very hands. I've talked about it. I was actually went down the, that way recently, but yes. um, I've been to that lighthouse and I did the tour. Mm. But the lighthouse, it's not the same on the inside. Oh, and I was very disappointed. Mm. And anyway, I hated it. It was a boring life that lighthouse tour. <laughs> it was like this is where they had the. This is where they change the light. And I'm like, is it? Mm. All right, let's go. What else you got, Here's Mason? an email, and I, I, I noted this down earlier because I think we should watch this and talk about it. Okay. But uh, this is from Matt. 
Matt. Hello, lads. Welcome back. After your time off, you were missed. Thanks, man. Uh, since you've taken the lazy route of asking your loyal listeners to, to suggest content for your show, That's us. I figured I'd suggest Michael Flatley's Blackbird. Did you see this, James? Michael Flatley? I think the you dancer? Should, yes. I think you should watch the trailer for this, James. Okay. I think you should maybe pause and watch the trailer for this. I'll or, not do it live? Or, oh, we could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Michael. You can just put in Blackbird trailer, I reckon. Oh, yeah, I got it. So if so, this is a. Um, Do you want to see it, or can I just? Uh, no, you can watch it. I want to see your reaction, if oh. I'm honest. He, is he an actor? No. no. Okay. Minute and a half. Dance Lord pictures. Yeah, Love yeah. that. Eric Roberts. Mm-hmm. It's ticking all the boxes, right? <laughs> Is he an assassin? Maybe. Okay. He's not going to get past it. Oh, kissing. Oh, he's doing action. What is this? It's a vanity project, James. It's like his James Bond, like he he taken. That's crazy. It seems. I was be- waiting for like, what is this? An ad for? Looks like an ad for a car or something, doesn't it? <laughs> or a mobile phone service or something? But it is. It's a. It's a movie, uh, which seems to be ex MI six operative. What he seems to. What seems to have happened here is he's decided he wants a role in a movie where he. It is a movie. I believe. How old is he? Six, in his 60s, 60, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a movie that is been that is starring, is written, directed, and produced by Michael Flatley. And if you don't recognize the name, it is because he is a. Uh, oh, it's from twenty eighteen. Okay. Oh, it's out. It's out, but it got a, it seems to have gotten a um a Ooh, rush of thirteen percent uh, run tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It got kind of a. It went unannounced for years, and then it got like this rush on social media all of a sudden. He. He wrote and directed it. Wrote, directed, I mean, I know you said it. that, but like. He starred in it. And he seems to be, it's 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 a movie where he is sort of a combination of James Bond and and um, Humphrey Bogart's character in Casablanca. Oh, okay. He's a spy, yeah, yeah, but he yeah. also owns a bar. And I think he paid for it himself. Yeah. Uh, and it looks fascinating, doesn't it? Uh, so this is a review from Marianne Johnson. Mm-hmm. Jonathan, who says, long rumoured, long threatened, mm-hmm. writer, director, producer, staff, flatly self financed, pab, pab, pabulum, pabulum, opus. pabulum, yes. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Pabulum. Like, um, like not magnum? No, not, not magnum. magnum. Like, um, pablum, like, uh, just, just like, like pablum Picasso? Yeah, like pablum Picasso, a real work of art. Yes. Okay. Like, like, Mush, I think. Is baffling and hilariously awful that exists only because it increased incredibly rich man as money to burn. It does feel like I was waiting for it to take a turn also into like Saturday Night Live where he's like, this you don't know like what I do, and then he's dancing. No dancing I right? was wa- waiting yeah. for that turn like it was just going to be a Did you like comedy. his cocked hat? <laughs> in his, every scene he he's had in a cocked the, hat. He's in the rain and he's yeah. by a grave. And yeah. It's just every- but in every scene a different cocked hat. It's God. fascinating. And what fascinates me about this is – He's. I assume he has so much money. He, he's because uh, he, people loved him in yeah. the nineties. He yeah, was yeah. everywhere. He was everywhere. But you could, if you had that amount of money, you could you could do James Bond things. You could learn. You could do like Tom Cruise stuff. You could learn to it's fly true. a plane. You could learn uh, to you know. You could learn martial arts. You could do rock climbing and stunt things. And you could you know fire guns. And you could you could put on a tuxedo and fly to Monaco and and go to a casino and. You know, gamble a bunch of money and, and all that sort of stuff. 
Yeah. But instead you've decided to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read the Wikipedia. Okay, great. Because I think there might be some answers to you to what you're talking about. So Blackwood was dismissed by a Vandy project. Uh, Brian Lloyd, an entertainment j- journalist, compared it to Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Mm-hmm. The first screening was in June of 2018, a private showing for cast and crew at the Stella Cinema, uh, et cetera. In 2018, Flatley also claimed to be in pre-production on Blackbird 2. Nice. However, there was never been a general release of Blackbird, fueling speculation about the film's, film's quality. In 2019, Brian Lloyd of Entertainment, i.e., wrote a lengthy investigation into the film, finding out that over 200 people attended the screening, and as far as he can reasonably, it can be reasonably determined, none of them were journalists or critics. When asked uh, if perhaps the jury, uh, the jury of Raindance Film Festival had seen Blackbird, uh, says that that this did not take place. A general film release to Irish cinemas has been announced for September 2nd, 2022, and it premiered in August 2022 of the Lighthouse Cinema in Dublin. So it has just come out. Oh, they made it in 2018. Yeah, so the trailer and all that and the announcements are from years back. Okay, so people have wait, been waiting for years to figure out, to, yeah. to learn what kind of amazing, you know, mobile phone plan details <laughs> they'll be getting, what incredible deals. Uh, flatly shows have paid for more than 60 million people in 60 countries and have grossed more than a billion dollars. Yeah. So, yeah, he, it says he's worth $350 million. And yeah, what's yeah. that, a $20 million movie maybe? I reckon he, mm, yeah, maybe, it's yeah. pretty generous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty million. Yeah, God, but I don't. Want, I want to watch it. Do you want to watch it? I do want to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mason, you should watch. We should both watch it for next week. Mm. <laughs> it does go for ninety minutes, so that's exactly ninety minutes. That is the Bruce. perfect action movie running time. Is so, he an actor? No. Unless I know he, I said that before, but like, unless he's been in like a Midsummer Murders or something. Yeah, I mean, I know his face, so I'm like, I feel like I would have seen him in something. River Dance, Lord of the Dance, Feet of Flames. Yeah. Celtic Tiger, television performances, Return to the Stage. Oh, very good. A flute album, uh, A Night to Remember, Dangerous Games, Injuries, Farewell to a Retirement, Trump Inauguration. What? He introduced his troupe for a performance at the inauguration of Donald Trump. Flatly called it a great honour. In 2018, <laughs> Flatly wrote, directed and financed and starred in Blackbird. Uh, painting. No, there's no other acting in here. Uh, here we go. As November 2018, pre-production work has already begun on Flatley's second film titled Dream Dance. Wow, wow, wow. Set wow, in wow. Hollywood during the outbreak of World War II. Wow. Blackbird premiered and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, also that's does painting. Stuff. This guy does it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only thing he does well is dancing, but this is incredible. Mm-hmm. Love it. Big fan. Right? Yeah, we should watch that for something. I don't know. Not for us, personally. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you know... 10, 15 years ago, we would have. We would absolutely <laughs> watch this, yeah. yeah. And just for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, may, maybe they don't know that, but this, what we do, yeah. we already did this. That's true. We've been doing this for 20-odd years. Do you think there's any references to river dancing in it? I don't know. Great question. Mm. Like a like a pair of shoes that he hangs up or in the cupboard. Or, or like he does a, like somebody shoots at him and he does a tiny little river dance together. I would away. love to see what kind of action Flatley's putting on screen, yeah, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Mm. God. He's had, like, you can see also the face is like he's had the surgery and the yeah, thing yeah, and the yeah, yeah, which is yeah. fine. Like, I'm not against plastic surgery. I would 100% get plastic surgery, um, and I will. I'm going to do it yeah, after you the should. show. you should. I should. Yeah, yeah. This is from- I mean, and look, it's quite, it's like half past 10, but I reckon if we if we ring around, we could probably, it's kind of imperative. You I could get, get in somewhere, right? Yeah, I think you can get in somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's got to be a 24-hour emergency plastic surgery place. <laughs> For your particular issue. <laughs> yes, so. yes, yes. Uh, you got any others? I've got some, this is a couple yeah. of thank yous. This is from Michael. Michael. He says, over this past year and a half, I've had the worst luck, got into a car accident, oh. had trouble with doctor bills for a while, to get a lot of dental work done, ah. and my mental health has plummeted. Ah. However, listening to your podcast and watching Caravan and Garbage has helped me cheer up and laugh so much. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for You're everything you You're very welcome, uh, Michael. God, that's got. Sucks. I can see your photo. You've got a, you've got a cheeky smile there. You bloody, you bloody. see this cheeky smile. Bit of a bit of a bit of a cheeky smile. There, That's but... too cheeky. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, but you know, yeah, it's good. It is good. Got to keep that cheek about you, don't That's you? That's right. It's good stuff. Uh, no, I'm glad you're doing well. And uh, despite all those things, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is from jo- uh, Script John, who we've heard from before. Too many servings of John. You might recognize. Oh yes, of course. Uh, so thoughts, and he wrote in relation to this. So Red Day, Jean, Jean Page, and Glenn mm. Powell will star in a remake of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yeah. The Russo now that's a Brothers. movie very close to your heart. I love yeah. that movie we'll produce. Now, there's also a sequel movie. Did you know? Oh, no, it's a prequel. It's like they recast it all. Apparently it's not very good. Uh, but it's called like The Early Adventures of Sundance and whatever. Okay, right, right. right. Uh, further details. Are, Butch uh, and Sundance Babies. 
It's right. <laughs> Further details of its plot are still being kept under wraps, but it reportedly takes place in an alternate reality similar to the one in the Prime video series Man in the High Castle. So where they live, they, these guys, they, they live. Wait, who lives in the... the man in the, Isn't the Man in the High Castle universe the one where the it's Nazis alternate one? It's the Nazis one or whatever. So... So Butch and Sundance are going to be in the Man in the High Castle universe. No, 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 in a, similar to the one. Oh, I see. Right. So they, they, if you've seen Butch, I mean, you'd know because they're famous outlaws. I guess they, they don't survive. Yes. So does that? Do you think they'd make it? They do survive. Well, maybe they? it's like, uh, maybe it's like a present day where stuff is still old west. Ooh. Like maybe, maybe techno. Maybe it's twenty twenty two, but technology hasn't progressed, and so it's still kind of wild west. Maybe mm. that's what they're talking about. Because, or maybe it's like, maybe they want to they want to modernize this concept. So they're like, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, we want a Butch Cassidy and a Sundance Kid, but they're Robin Banks in uh, bloody bloody modern day. Or they're using like. credit cards. They're using credit cards. They're shooting holes in a bitcoin. Credit cards. They're credit shooting holes in coals in credit cards. Yes, that's right. They're shooting up a coal supermarket. <laughs> My initial thought for this though was like <laughs> they're going to Red Rooster. They're like, <laughs> give us all the chicken in the attic. In the attic, we know it's there. <laughs> It was all a good chicken. <laughs> it's uh, my initial thoughts was oh, I hate the idea of this, but then looking into mm. it and who said it, whatever, and yeah, why not? Yeah, Have another true. run at it. It won't take away from the original movie, mm. probably. And as I said, there's already a prequel or something. I think that's right. It's called Butch and Sundance: The Early Years or something. Mm. Anyways, is that is that the end of the show? I think that's the end of the whole show, folks. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We're back, baby. We thought people wouldn't come back, it's but they've true. come back. The early days, it's called. Peter Weller's in it. Oh, I love that Peter Weller. Yeah, I was worried because the first Caravan of Garbage video we came up, it was, they tells you, did I tell you this? I think you mentioned this last episode, did I? actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> bad news. But now we're news. back, baby. That's right. Folks, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Thank you for subscribing to the podcast. Thank you for re- leaving a five star review, which is how other people find the podcast. Because when you it leave is. a five star review, your podcast catcher of choice is like, you want to watch, you want to listen to the Weekly Planet? You want that? Telling you want your friend that? also helps as well. Uh, like that's the right. Thing you said it's all good, isn't it? Yes. This, this, I've got some here, Mason. Mm-hmm. It's from Callie Maker 211 who says, Fine, James, you win. After six years of listening to your show, James finally broke me down enough to review it in app. Which, that's true. You can review it in app. Very it's so true. easy. Whatever mm-hmm. you're listening to it on now. This is the first ever podcast I've listened to, and it's still my favorite podcast to this day. Keep up the great work, mates. Cheers. And there's two beer emojis. Ooh. And this one's also five stars. Or is stars. it one beer emoji and they cling together? No. Oh, great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's it's two. It's, 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 it's two, you know how they cheers? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. together, but there's two of those. Oh. So it's four beers in total, two oh, separate we got, emojis. Oh, we got, we got two beers each. That's right. Hell yeah. Double fisting, baby. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this one's from Dusty Lover 73 He says five stars. Dusty. And then says, just a bit dusty. Not bad. We'll take that. We'll take those, it. James. Those five star reviews will keep us warm as we sail the seas of content on the ship we're still on. The, sh- the ship of. Content. I remembered it from earlier. <laughs> yeah, we're on the ship. The great ship content. Great. We've we've dumped all the content on the shores. I hope everybody's for the people. seen it. All the all the all the people have come out from their village and they're you like, say, oh, yeah, you've done, you've done it. it. Now go and get more content. Oh, can we stay and can we have? Can we enjoy? No, it? Oh. we just need more. Your pariahs from the village, you know what you did. <laughs> just get us more content. <laughs> you grubs, get out of here. It's our life. That is, that's it's true. What we do. But if you want to get into contact it's with also, us. And we're on horses. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, folks, uh, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod, a subreddit, and Discord. Wow. If you want to follow some people on social media, you can follow our friend Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at the Weekly Planet on He'll Twitter. He'll tell you the truth. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He'll tell you the secrets. Yep. He'll tell you about... Hot singles in your area. He'll tell you that one <laughs> trick to get rid of belly fat that the doctors don't want you to know about. They don't want you to know. Yeah, that's right. But you can also follow me at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, on an Instagram at Nick Meso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Wow. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck or an amount you wouldn't miss. That's the golden amount, James. It really is. If everybody gave us that amount of money they wouldn't miss, mm. we'd have everybody. upwards of... 10, $10 to fifteen dollars. We'd have everybody's extra money, and we'd lay waste to that town. We deliver content too. We'd come back with weapons of war. <laughs> oh no! Yes, Mason. No, James. <laughs> yes. Wow. Do you think? Yeah, I reckon probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah. 
like a sick cannon or whatever. Exactly, like a sick cannon. Like or one whatever. of those one of those cannonballs, but it's a bunch of cannonballs, but it's connected with a big chain. Yeah, and you just fire and it's swinging, a... swinging around. Yeah, you know? that's so cool. That's right. Here's some content for you. Yeah, bam. You're dead. That's right. Yeah, running with a knife in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that weird album movie. For the look, good. I wouldn't lie. It's you know, no. Like, it's, <laughs> Remember Will Smith? He said I do, thing. I do, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah I wouldn't yeah. actually stab anybody with no, that. No, no. But yeah, I'm just like, Argh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or if you're a big, big, big time spender, you can go to Patreon. Uh, no, not that. You can go to bigsandwich.co. This is where it's at. Nine US dollars per month. We've got all sorts of bonus podcasts, movie commentaries, as we mentioned, Captain America. It's up there Superman now. comic book, all sorts of bonus stuff. Well, that's coming line. up soon. That's not out We've got to record after huge, this. Yes, and there's a huge back catalogue. Yeah, that's right. A bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, Caravan of Garbage uh, wraps up The Hobbit this week. That's right. So uh, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Bit of a long one, I'll tell you, tell you that just, much. Well, because for, for those, you know, peek behind the curtain, we recorded two of those before we went on break. Yes, that's and right. And the third one was after. Mm-hmm. So it just felt like I just felt like it was always in the back of my mind. Mm, it felt like an unexpected journey. It certainly sort. did. A real desolation of Smaug. Yep. A real... Five armies. Yes. Yes. Nice. Five guys. Like the White Stripe song. That's right. There's, a five, there's a five guys burger in Melbourne. Now, is it? Do you have to line up forever for? I don't know. I haven't been yet, but I will. Yeah. Um, Tell me how it is, and then I'll know. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, great. We'll both uh, get it for next week. You son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, what's the? What, oh yeah, if you want to uh, support the show, you could also go to uh, tpublic.com. Let's search for the Weekly Planet. Base of a T-shirt. A t-shirt supports us in some very negligible way. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, but also, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rack and Pro musical themes. Next week, Michael Flatley's Blackbird. <laughs> And then Snake Eyes. Then Snake Eyes, that's right. And maybe I'll finish Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. I don't know what we're doing next week yet, actually. Maybe Sorry. League of Super Pets because it's only just come out here. But, Primo stuff. But does anybody care about League of Super Pets? Maybe we will when we watch yeah, it. It's pretty good. I think I am going to go this week because it's school holidays and I'll take my son. Yeah, okay. But uh, maybe we'll go back into cinemas and see Avatar again. Mm. Probably not, though. No. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that, Jamie, guys. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Get out of here. Ammo.